December 3rd and um, it's 7 o'clock welcome so on the first item on our agenda tonight is we have um, an opening for an advisory committee member um, this is for a short term uh, from now until June 30th 2013 um, 2014 sorry um, to fill a position that was um, vacated when um, Mike Zelenkov left for a variety of reasons. Um, so we are we have three candidates that are in, that are interviewing tonight. Um, uh, this is very exciting for us. We have uh, you know more people talking to us than usual, and we're so we're very happy with um, having folks here. Um, the first person that we'd like to talk to is David Lindsay, who's here. Um, David, I I planned on um, sort of summarizing what the uh, advisory committee does okay. <laughs> I, I know that you know that and and since I'd have to go through this a couple of other times I figure we could if, unless you'd like me to do that do you want to come up sure so um, what I'd like to do is um, I came up with a, a few questions that I want to be the same questions we're going to ask each of the candidates mm -hmm. and then um, each of the committee members can certainly ask questions um, so we're going to allow you know between 10 and 15 minutes for each candidate um, and then um, after everybody's interviewed then we'll have some discussion and we'll vote so um, thank you for applying uh, the first question is just to tell tell us something about yourself why you are interested in being on the advisory committee and what you think you have to offer well uh, I've been involved uh, working with the town for about 10 years now uh, almost uh, on the advisory committee and then for three years as a selectman. Uh, I um, think I have done some good for the town over that uh, period. Uh, I believe uh, taxes and spending might be even higher if it weren't for me. Uh, and I uh, think uh, I played a significant role in the police station or the new public safety building. Uh, and I'm proud as a selectman having uh, worked on the school resource officer issue last year and having helped, I think, accelerate that uh, faster than it would have occurred otherwise. Um, and I would like to continue working for the town. Uh, I think it's possible for me to do that outside the committee. Uh, but I think I could do it more effectively as part of the committee. Um, the, um, you all are very good about letting me participate uh, in the meetings, but it's not quite the same as being a member of the uh, participation. And in terms of access to information, I think it's a little easier if you're on the committee. Uh, although, thank you very much, Julie, for giving me the, uh, the sheets, so I appreciate that, and I have them in my easy-to-read format uh, right back there, so if we discuss them later this evening, uh, I'll be able to do that. Um, I think also uh, uh, I represent a significant portion of the town when I write a letter to the common, and I guess in the future to the item. Um, a lot of people come up and say they appreciate seeing that and they, they agree with me. Uh, Randy had said at an earlier meeting that um, I was the only one who came, and I guess that's true, but as you may have noticed from some of the uh, emails, there are a lot of people around town who wanted to uh, send in support for my, my candidacy here. So I, I think that's a point of view that, that ought to be represented on the committee. Uh, in terms of background and experience, uh, I obviously am ready to go. There won't be any uh, much in, in the way of a learning curve since since I've been on the committee before and, and uh, a selectman since that time. Uh, and my, my previous background 
um, you know, b before joining or participating in town government, uh, was as a uh, investment manager and financial analyst. So I'm, I'm pretty strong on income statements and balance sheets and, and all, all kinds of financial uh, statements. So I think putting all that together, I would make a, a good plan for the Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm going to tell you what the other, you might have answered them, you can certainly, you know, add more, right. some of the other questions. Mm -hmm. what, what experience can you bring to the committee, you feel like, I think I, you might I have answered. I think I've answered that pretty well. Yeah. And um, probably the next one, too, have you had other experiences volunteering in Bolton and in other towns? I don't know if you did anything before that, or you might want to bring up some of your other volunteer work besides Slickman and... Yeah, um, obviously I've had a lot of experience uh, in the town here. Uh, in addition, I'm uh, chairman of the investment committee of the New England Wildflower Society. Uh, so I, um, I get that charitable endowment aspect of, of things. Uh, I'm very active in the Boston <coughs> Economic Club and was president of it several years ago. Uh, and um, when I lived in Western, I was politically active there. Um, the only, um, I, I led a committee called Residence for Weston, um, and it was the only time an override was ever defeated in the history of, of Weston. So this isn't so, new. So, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, I, I think I've had some experience that goes back, back even before. Okay. Um, do you understand the time commitment, and are you going to be able to meet it? Yes. I, I understand the time commitment really well. And, um, how do you feel about working with the team? We are, um, a, you know, a group that um, some of us have been here quite a while. Brad, probably the newest person, but um, so it's it's very much of a team. The way I I like things is very much of a team and a um, a, a, a group li listening to opinions and that type of thing. And how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel favorably about it, and I think uh, everyone but Brad was on the committee when I was last on the committee, so uh, I felt while there were definite disagreements, um, I don't think it was dysfunctional at all. I think we got everything done. Um, when I was on the selectmen, there were a lot of disagreements there, but I think it was possible, even when I was chairman, to be both very vigorous in defense of my point of view and still run a, a reasonable meeting. So so I think I can work well in a team situation, but it's true that I'm not a go-along, get-along person. And I think part of working well in a team situation is to be able to hold your own views and disagree, but accept a majority vote. And I think I've always been pretty good about accepting a vote even if it's gone gone against me. Okay. And lastly, do you have any questions for us? I don't think I do, primarily because I've been to all of your meetings uh, since I left the Board of Selectmen and nearly all of them while I was a selectman and uh, all of them for five years before that. So, so uh, I think um, I, I really do understand the process and, and what's, what's uh, going on. Um, I, I, um, I, I do want to say um, how important it is, in my view, that we do something about the tax rate. And I suspect I hold that opinion more strongly than many of you. <coughs> uh, but again, I do believe that's a point of view that should be represented on the committee. And I think it will work better for the town if it's represented on the committee than if, um, you know, big political effort has to be made outside the committee to, to try to resolve that. Um, so, so that's another reason why I would like to be on the committee. Okay, good. So um, I want to open it up for questions um, from committee members. Nothing about it. How about you, Randy? Um, So I'm going to be I'm going to be somewhat candid, right? I think one of the major problems that I have, David, with you, your 
your uh, rejoining the committee is what's happened and not not so much recently as, as well as oh, since you've left in terms of some of the sort of the critical nature of, of, of um, correspondence to the paper um, you know some of the public comments um, while you know you know me fairly well I'm not shy to have uh, a disagreement of opinion or a healthy dialogue I just I, I wonder um, with you coming back on the committee to the extent that there is a, a difference of opinion within the walls of this room that I'm going to be reading about it um, in the next Friday edition of the paper and I, I don't know that we've had that element to deal with before I think you were under the three or years or so that I worked with you on this committee I don't think that you wrote a single letter to the paper during that period of time and it was just most recently or at least over the past few years which which you've taken up that sort of that medium of communication and some of your involvement in some advocacy groups whether it be for the Smith property or for um, you know defeating the, uh, uh, the, you know, the marijuana moratorium etc and that element I, I, I gotta be honest I can't I can't get my head around and I yeah. wonder how it will be I, I as, as a member of the advisory committee I would not form or be part of any group uh, I think that was very appropriate for an elective office like selectmen but advisory committee is more advisory in, in, a, in other words weighing a lot of different things and, and coming to a conclusion um, I can't say that I won't ever write a letter, but I think um, if I'm a member of the committee, the tone is likely to be different, and I think there'd be fewer of them, because I can express all that in here. Um, if we get into um, my being outside the committee, we form um, you know, a taxpayers group of some sort, and uh, you know that that's going to be a, a a typical political uh, going to it, um, and I, I think that that wouldn't be the way it would work if I were on the committee. Uh, I, I would definitely not uh, participate in an action group like that if I were on the committee. I think that would be, I might get up at town meeting and offer an amendment, but, but it wouldn't be as part of a political action group. Dave, you've been very consistent with um, the tax rate. A lot of the emails that your supporters have sent in speak to that as well. Tell me what it is gonna, what would have changed. Tell me what your solution is on why we're in this problem, because all these folks seem to, seem to imply you're the, Great White Hope on lowering taxes. What would this town should? What should this have town done since you've been off the committee? Well, I think it's what we should do going forward. Um, for for instance, when um, Don gave the budget message, and I su suggested at the selectmen's meeting that we should be looking at what three percent cuts in each department would look like not that we should necessarily implement them. Uh, there just didn't seem to be any interest in that at all. It was sort of level <coughs> level services and maybe a little addition here and there. And, and I think we should definitely be taking it, a look in each department. What would a 3% cut look like? Um, second, um, I think I would probably be, I, I very much appreciate um, in the discussion uh, particularly Randy and Bob have talked about um, using a significant amount of the excess free cash for tax relief. Uh, I would probably push that even harder. Um, it, it would be really tough to, to get a capital project past me as opposed to using it for tax relief. There may be a couple. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean I'm sure there are probably a few, but, but, but I'd be very um, tough in that regard. And finally, uh, I think uh, we need to learn to start borrowing inside 
um, two and a half. I think I think what we do when we borrow outside two and a half is we immediately raise the taxes and we don't put any pressure on ourselves to find offsetting expenditures. If a capital project is so good that we ought to have it, then I think we ought to borrow inside two and a half and not do something else. And our problem, I think our big problem has been, um, to get back to your, your question, our, probably our biggest problem has been always borrowing with a, with a tax exclusion. And that's going right to the tax rate. And you, you look at some of the other towns around here, um, we're a lot bigger on excluded debt as being part of our tax rate. Any other questions for David? Okay, thank you. I think this might be Stasha. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. You're in the right place. Thanks. Hi. Hello. And I saying it right, Stasha? You are. Yeah. yeah I've been fantastic. trained. I've been trained. <laughs> oh, was, thank you. I was. Uh, come on in. Okay. Great. And thank I, you. And I think um, this is Stasha Downey. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having um, me. So we'll introduce ourselves because you probably don't know us. I'm Terry Abdalian. I'm chair. I've been on the committee three years. Took a year break. Back on. Okay. Okay. We'll just go around. I'm Julie Costello. I'm the town accountant. Nice to meet you, Julie. Hi, Bob Sikansky. Oh, I'm Randy Dingen. Nice, nice to see you, Randy. Connie Benjamin. Nice to meet you, Connie. Brad Cody. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You want to get comfortable? <laughs> sure, yes. It was chilly out there. It's chilly. It can warm up in here. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that was just a little uh, chill. You know, all the hot air devices. Right, right, right. Just the euphemism. Not the hot seat. It's just us. We're just the hot seat. So, um, thank you very much for um, applying for this open position. And um, as I mentioned before, this is a short term position um, from now until June 30th. Um, at that time, there'll be an opening for a three-year position, but it's um, in this kind of a case that we, the advisory committee, do the interviewing and pick the candidate, pick the the member, and usually it would go through another committee. So, oh, okay. so this is a little different, and it's only done in these short, these short terms. So, um, <clears throat> just going to give a little background as okay. to what the advisory committee does. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay. Appreciate Great. it. So, just by what what our name says, we advise um, the town at town meeting and this, before that the selectmen and the departments in town about um, warrant articles and the budgets or the, okay. the really the budget being one of the warrant articles that will be on the uh, on the uh, warrant town meeting and the way we do that is what snap you know, what be, becomes what people are often concerned of is we have a, hev a heavier schedule from january until um, through April until town meeting where we meet with all of the departments and committees of town We do other things as well, but that's a lot of what we how do. How many are there? How many are there? How many are there? There's what a meeting a week. <laughs> We meet every week from, from Jan from the beginning of January until town meeting. Yeah, it's in it's, it's, Jersey, it's, it's well, about it's really 14 just, meetings in a row Yeah, yeah I, got, I just did I mean, not that you have just one night a week? Just Tuesdays. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday nights. Night. Just Tuesday nights. And night. there may be a few selections meetings for the um, town meeting mm -hmm. that so you might attend. Okay. Meetings with them. That's kind of what the schedule is. Oh, great. So um, it's not, that's not in stone yet, but that's because what happens, you can see there's so many yeah, there. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> and, um, and so we might call it happen with the very first meeting. Um, or the very yeah the very first meeting where we called one of the depart uh, departments they couldn't make it because someone was going to be on vacation so we have to do switch rounds with that gotcha and fortunately I don't have to do that that's done by the town secretary uh, Linda Day so that it does it's a little bit of a moving target but that kind of gives you an idea yeah no this is great um, I am coming from a place where uh, uh, just to let you know um, Tuesdays were my gym night. So I ironically had already put it into my the schedule as I've, I've got either babysitting or a husband available, and so, ah, so you, when so this yeah, came up, like, okay. so it's all, I'm, I'm like I've, I've got coverage for you know, so. <laughs> but we don't want one you know, of the many things that. And it's not gym for some of us is not a big it's not a big night for us. Some of us clearly it's never. never <laughs> and going down to the town dump is like big on a Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. get out of the house. Um, 
So we, we do that. Um, uh, we also take a look at um, at uh, capital items, you know, capital projects okay. that come in that are not necessarily part of the budget, but they're okay. also, you know, that we have a capital planning group. They present it to us and we look at it um, as far as find, how do you finance these different things? What, you know, what do we have money for? What don't we have money for? So does that come, do those kinds of um, questions come get filtered through the capital committee yes. for a, like a specific meeting with them or does it come from any group? I think they're um, first on the, the list. So what happens when the, when the, okay. when the uh, there's a period of time, there's about a month, where the departments um, have the opportunity to put their budgets together. They then submit their budgets to Julie and uh, then they get sent to us. As part of that pro process, they're also asked to come up with capital items that they think that they might need. Okay. Uh, it could be uh, a wish list. A wish list. Um, yeah. And then that's, that goes to capital planning, and then it gets to and us. And then they filter the the big stuff to you, or the, the what makes it through. They want to pay the, for the you. <laughs> <laughs> the the filter is kind they of. They determine working. the relative priorities Very good. of all the projects, and then sit down with us and go over that. Yeah. Okay. And, we, and we may or may not agree with the priorities, but we give give the priorities a lot of consideration and we try mm -hmm. to figure out within the confines of the financial situation that we have what we can do and what, what we can't do. So this uh, committee is actually then another filter before town meeting? Yeah, yes. we're kind of the last filter. We, okay. Yeah. We and are meeting we, with <laughs> yeah. groups right now, capital plan. Okay. This meeting with departments where they should, should be now. Well, yeah, they'll be well, because then they're coming to you. Well, yeah. All that. Okay. And that, that process will take, I mean, it won't be that first meet, that first day in, meeting in January that we're going to know everything, but that's you know the beginning of that, that capital idea. project. Yeah. As, okay. as part of town warrant, there is a recommendation for or against from the advisory committee. Yes, so I we will that. vote on all of that stuff about are we recommending the town vote for it or are we recommending the town vote against it? Very good. Yep. Um, what else do we do? We also administer a reserve fund, and that fund is we have a hundred thousand dollars that we're given um, at the beginning of the year, and that's for expenditures that come up that are unanticipated okay from from the current year is that budgeted every year yes, yes. okay yeah and uh finally we we like to, we hope that we have a good working relationship with the board of selectmen and mm -hmm. the town administrator so that's an important part of what we do as well all of our meetings are public so we hope it's a a good relationship with the uh, the, uh, the public as well and um and that's that's what pretty much what we're doing so um, I'm going to <laughs> ask you. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's busy. It's busy. Um, I'm going to ask you just um, what I w I'm wanting to do with the three candidates is sure. to ask oh, the same three. question. Okay, there's three. Yeah, there's three. Um, ask the mm -hmm. same questions sure. and have you give, have you have the chance to respond to them. Okay. And then open it up to the committee members to ask you specific questions, and we'll give you a chance to ask us some questions. Okay. 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 Good. So first. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're interested in the position, and what you think you have to offer the advisory committee. Okay. Um, I, I don't want to recap my letter. You've all read my letter. That's fine. <laughs> okay. no, that's um, here from you in and short, um, I, I grew up in this town. Um, I have a vested love and interest in this town. Um, I'm raising my own children in this town. Um, and I. I um, bring to the committee a, um, uh, as a perspective uh, as a parent, um, as a, a parent of young children, as a um, former child, um, as a um, educator, um, and uh, as somebody who's worked in business with a lot of uh, relational kind of positions. Um, and it seems like this committee from what I what I gather my own internet research um, deals with a lot of that you're, you're constantly filtering information and ideas and trying to prioritize and advise on them and um, so I have some of that background from my business um, background um, and uh, uh, that's that's I think pretty pretty much it and uh, uh, yeah in short, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I could go on and on because I love it. And everybody, when I if I mention your name, it's it's Stasha Ignatz. 
Yeah. My maiden name yeah, is, yeah, is so Ignatz. Yeah, she's yeah, an Ignatz. That's right? oh dear. Yes, if we probably come across that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of us running around. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, what experience can you bring to the committee uh, as you when you were looking at what we do? Okay. Um, uh, I am. Uh, I've worked with special education children and in the school district um, for uh, let's see, three four years. Not in this district. Um, in neighboring Acton Boxborough, um, uh, I um, have a lot of relationships in town um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, I am and in I when I when I start something I like to finish it when I get my head into something I I go into it um, full-on um, and but uh, I think I have a good um, balance uh, in terms of uh, being able to listen and um, take in ideas and then in facts uh, and make decisions and um, for lack of a better term judgments based on on that kind of information um, uh, yeah okay good uh, have you had experiences volunteering in town or in other towns and, or other experiences sure. or, or oh sure in, with min in municipals um, uh, not no so that is that that, that that's kind of my um, uh, that would be my my weakness for lack of a better term um, I've never been in town government before um, uh, so where I see that kind of as a strength and a weakness mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm coming in clean yeah. um, but I but I in, in the sense that um, I, I there's a learning curve there mm -hmm. um, I know myself well enough to know that I would jump in you know uh, uh, to to uh, get over that learning curve and then become productive. Um, my, one of my concerns was uh, when I would sat down and started contemplating this job was, uh, um, and I just see it kind of as a job, you know, it's a responsibility, it it's something that, that is, is um, <laughs> yeah, well, and based on this, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of time that um, I wanted to make sure that um, with my busy schedule at home that I could, um, I could uh, be effective and productive and give give the you know give you guys a, a productive member mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I had to kind of hash out you know the Tuesday night thing worked right away um, but I said geez um, there's this learning curve are there other nights of the week that I can you know dedicate to um, learning policy or you know the, the financials uh, I don't have a financial background um, my background is more in um, relationships and, and people um, uh, so, okay. that, um, in terms of volunteering, you mentioned volunteering, volunteering in schools, um, volunteering in my church, um, you know, those kinds of uh, membership with other mothers and mothers groups and um, hosting events and things like that. I do have that kind of a background. Thank you. Um, and the time commitment, you can kind of answer that. Anything more that you'd like to add to that? Are you, is it something you think you can meet? Um, I think, well, uh, oh yes, no, I can, I can meet it. Wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, but um, I would be interested in just tapping you real quick if this is an appropriate time to do that as to um, your availability to um, uh, maybe have a sit down at some point and catch me up in terms of, and, and I'll just plant that seed that I, I wouldn't want to I want to impose, but I also would want you know um, any any information that that I could um, that would be that you would want to catch me up on. I would be open to that. Okay. So we are um, uh, we have uh, what do they call it public meeting? No, that's not good. Um, open, open meeting, meeting laws. Mm -hmm. okay. So so um, we cannot meet as. Um, a, a group, a collect group, without it being televised and being open okay. to the public. But we can meet on an individual basis okay. and do that type of thing. I point to Julie because she is a not, she's a very much part of our advisory committee, but she is not an, a, an appointed member, per se, very, but very important to us. And she also is yes. a town accountant and knows 
everything that there is to know about. All the rules. You're like, oh, she she the she <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even if you had a huge financial background, I don't think anybody can really, under, except for Julie, can understand municipal accounting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. So there's, there, there are there would be ways of, yeah. of doing that. Um, and uh, how do you how do you feel about working as a t a t with a team and and um, are you open to others other people's opinions? It's Absolutely. very much. I mean, it doesn't mean that we get. I mean, I don't know if you've watched us. It doesn't mean that we get along all the time because that wouldn't be um, good for the town or um, or reasonable for us. But it means that we listen to each other. And so I just exactly. want to. So that's an important. From my perspective, it's a very important part of being part of this. this Absolutely. Group. Um, Yes, no, that, that, that's where my confidence lies. Um, I, I think it, my philosophy is that you, you, can't, you can't be a productive group without opposing and, and different opinions coming in. And um, uh, the, how people receive and then give, give their own information back is an art. Um, but when done well and with a group that you know, is doing that well, I mean, that, that, that would be the ideal situation for Bolton, I think. So, yeah. um, Yes, that, that um, uh, I feel like it would bring that to the Good, thank you. And do you have a question? I mean, you've asked questions. Do you have any other questions you'd like to ask us at this time, or you want to hear some more questions from committee members? Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer more questions. I, um, I think I'm good so far. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who has some questions? I'm just curious, did you? you get up and speak at one of the meetings, a town meeting, as a Thanks. community member? Um, um, the only time I've ever spoken at a town meeting, actually, I can tell you, um, is um, when I was about 18, maybe 19 years old, and um, there was a it was a heated budget school budget discussion, and so I got up and I spoke as a former graduate of Neshoba and was um, putting in my 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 plug for the um, budget to go through that year. Um, as you consider joining the advisory committee, as you were considering applying for the position. Um, you know, we have a pretty broad uh, portfolio. We can pretty much review anything the town's uh, considering doing or not doing or stuff like that. Uh, what kinds of things would you hope the committee would, that, that you look forward to being able to discuss and address? Good question. Um, I, in short, the um, the idea that we are a community that um, lacks business right now, um, or that the, the benefit of a tax base um, coming in from businesses, and yet holds a character. I think in part because of that lack of businesses, I find that to be a very interesting balance that this town is trying to maintain. Um, and uh, I look forward to that challenge. I see it as a very big challenge, but I think it's one worth fighting. Um, uh, not fighting, that's not the right word, discussing <laughs> um, productively and hearing opinions. And there's certainly there's been a lot of discussion and things that have already um, uh, uh, gone on, and I think that needs to continue. Um, and uh, that's that's been an interest of mine. So that would be a, that would be at the top. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions? What um, what do you think are the issues facing? Uh, and maybe this is the same kind of question Bob just asked. But mm -hmm. you know, you you, are, you 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 run in some different circles than some of us, I'm sure, as, as <coughs> many people. What do you hear that people are concerned about that that uh, that you look forward to? Sort of helping to tackle um, that I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> would um, I think what happens with the Smith property um, that that's I, I've been following that one a lot um, I the kind of what happens the overall center of Bolton um, and some of the the pockets of character if you will to the town um, uh, are, are specific interests of mine. Um, I uh, also, um, yeah, I think that that's a big one. So, where do you see the town in ten years? <sighs> Let me put myself there. Um, <clears throat> I 
maintaining its values and strengths. Um, strengths being within its its agriculture and its um, attention to education and its um, attention to uh, uh, the quality. I feel like there's a very you know quality of, of the environment and the and the the. Just the soundness of the area, like that in place, but also um, with a respectable, mm, it's not the right word, um, a, a well thought out um, plan to uh, grow the right kind of business within the town. Sorry, that took a lot of <laughs> hemming and hawing to get that out right. <laughs> I, I get you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Anything you want to ask? No, I'm good. Uh, okay. Thank you. That's good. So, any, any, now that uh, <laughs> you've heard from us, any other questions you'd like to ask us? Um, in in the the downtime after um, town meeting, um, what kinds of activity does the um, committee say? Well, um, pretty quiet at that point. You know, over the summer. Uh, Usually, we had a special town meeting this year, so that did, oh, right. yeah, so we mm -hmm. we would be participating in that. Not nearly. There's not a budget, so it's it's there's not a presentation that we do. It's a little bit more stepped back, but we do still consider all of the articles and, and pretty well involved with that. Okay. So, but generally, it's it can be a pretty quiet time. There might be people coming in and asking for uh, what the, this this reserve some money from the okay, sure. transfer. Would um, that call a meeting then? It it would it mm -hmm. it. Yes, it would have to, depending, um, you know, try not to have that be the only reason. Right. But generally, it's a pretty quiet time, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we've we, had at times we, six meetings since... Uh, well, there's been a lot this, this time, you know, because of the special town meeting, and then we've had... Well, we've, more, we've had some towns, I mean, the we've had some stuff going on, uh, too. Yeah, you know, we, 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 always, we always have a meeting late in June, right. and then another one yes. early in July, specifically to deal with what's called the snow and ice deficit. Oh, yes. Where it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a money transfer that has to occur the first two weeks of July. Uh, and after that, I think we meet monthly just to deal with housekeeping kinds of stuff right. until but, yeah. Um, yeah. January again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this year it's been this much more been active. All, all yeah, this, this year has been much more active. Um, but generally, it's pretty quiet. Okay. Um, and then, so may I ask another question? Sure. Um, the, um, so apart from the Tuesday night meetings, um, th there's just a lot. Um, so I'm wondering, how much time do you find yourselves, apart from Tuesday nights, spending on this committee? And what kinds of things do you do in that capacity? Are you, are you at other meetings? Are you at home on the computer? You know, what, what, what's the commitment like apart from Tuesday nights? Well, we do have, um, uh, all of the members have sort of a liaison responsibility and that is, they don't want it to, make, to sound more than it is with with different departments and tasks. No, that's great. So they so have that, a per a It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that there's meetings they're going to, um, and uh, in, in particular, uh, but it is uh, something that we we've done in the past with the larger departments, and this year we're doing with any with all any department that wants a, a liaison to the okay. advisory committee might help them in in the um, preparation for uh, coming before us. Otherwise, there are other meetings, but it's nothing's mandatory. I I go and this was sort of set by our predecessors with the um, select, you know, going to the selectman meetings. There's tri county. There are other meetings, but there's no requirement to go. Right. So I'll give you some perspective. Um, I've been I've been the chairman for a couple of years. Not not obviously currently. We are in very good hands. Um, <laughs> I would attend selectman's meetings on Thursday night just to to keep keep up on what's happening um, since we don't just deal with financial matters we actually uh, provide an opinion on the warrant on, on any matter before the town okay. including zoning um, changes in zoning uh, and the like uh, I've found myself at planning board meetings from time to time as they have uh, forums or uh, public uh, public uh, what do they call it public like meetings, meetings to uh, <laughs> an open, they have a, a hearing, oh, yes, a yes. hearing, that's the word I was looking for, 
to discuss the proposed zoning. So right. if you're going to be able, if you're going to be asked to vote on something, you know, you'll want to get a uh, perspective and you can get it online or you can get it going to the you meeting, can find you can watch it on too. television. Right. Um, and so helpful. the commitment is sort of what uh, from from other than Tuesday night, it's really about what you want to make of it. I think, I and think people, so. you know, you can you can at two o'clock in the morning watch a, a rebroadcast of a planning board meeting that you missed at, okay. at your home, right? Just to get through, up to speed. Through Matco. Yeah, yeah, through yeah. Matco. Yeah. Just yeah, to get up right. to speed on something that you want to, some information that you want to glean so that you can make an educated decision. Great. I've been at school committee meetings the like right same, yeah, same the, concept same idea the, the yeah. so not most a, of those meetings I'm sorry not a requirement I just want to right. no no but I, I I'm kind of I'm you know as Randy said if you're gonna be asked to um, to, to make a judge or you know make it have an opinion and present that opinion you want it to be as educated as possible so um, my I can recognize my limitations are getting out of the house mm -hmm. at, at certain points because I've got all these kids running around so having access online or off hours so to speak so I can do my own research is um, reassuring yep and that's available great Good. thank you thank you you're welcome to stay um, we have one more candidate to talk to thank you thank, thank you, thank you very much Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. Colin, hi. Come on up. Thanks. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. Welcome and thank you for applying. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the opportunity. So, um, first we'll just introduce ourselves because okay. unless you've been watching TV on Tuesday night, you don't know about us. Um, they don't know what we look like, maybe. Um, so, I'm Terry Dillian, I'm chair, and I've been on the committee total. Of, uh, this is my fourth year, I was, took a little break. And, uh, uh, Bob Sakinski, this is my sixth year. Actually. I'm Randy Dinger. Nice right. to meet you. Nice to meet Benjamin. Hi. Con, great to meet you. Brent. How are you? How are you? <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, you're even a neighbor of yeah, mine. In the interest I, of full disclosure, yeah, we, are, we're, we are neighbors. neighbors. And, you're, and I'm on Vaughn Hill. Just I mean, You could probably throw something. I don't know. Who's actually, he no, would be but closer. don't. Do that. <laughs> he would be closer. He would be clo yeah, he'd be slightly he'd be closer. Slightly closer. Fine. I've got two vicious dogs. Oh, dogs. No, <laughs> you, the concern is, you know, you're above. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I can go rolls downhill. <laughs> so, we're actually more concerned about you. I'd be more concerned. That's probably good. Right. Well, welcome. Um, so um, I'm just going to do my, uh, so what we're going to do is I'll tell you a little bit about the committee. Okay. I have a set of set six questions to ask, and then we'll open it up for folks to ask Great. questions afterwards. Okay. So. Basically, um, the advisory committee is just what it sounds like. We advise the town uh, at town meeting about budget article, uh, all any warrant articles that appear on the um, on the warrant, mm -hmm. at, um, and that includes budget items, but all items that appear on the warrant. In order to accomplish that, we meet pretty much every week from January through April, mm -hmm. town meeting in May. Um, and then after that, I'm going to sort of jump in with another question. What, what happens after um, the end of the year is we don't meet a heck of a lot, generally, unless there's a special town meeting or if there's something that comes up um, until um, the following January. Uh, as part, so what we're doing in, in these uh, weekly meetings that we have is we meet with every department and committee in town and um, discuss, really go through their budgets, keeping in mind, you know, what. Um, what cash is available, what other, uh, you know, how, what things might come up um, that might require that cash and uh, just sort of evaluate their budgets and be fiscally responsible. Okay. And also look at um, capital projects as well. And that information comes to us from capital planning, but we, we look at all capital projects as well. And that's okay. a lot of what appears on town meeting awards. Great. We also have an advisory reserve uh, fund that we, uh, that people come to us during the year if there's a special um, unanticipated expense that we would then evaluate what they, the expense was in transfer, if appropriate transfer money to them if they didn't have that money in their budget. Okay. And it was, you know, we, we deemed it a good thing to do. And um, uh, we also keep um, a good relationship mm -hmm. uh, with the Board of Selectmen and 
um, the town administrator. So that's something that we think is important as well. Okay, great. So this is a short position. This is a position that goes from now until June 30th, mm -hmm. uh, 2014. And at that point, then, it, if you're interested, it would be an application for a three-year, usual terms for three years. But this is filling a, a position that was someone left. Okay. Um, during, and that's, that's why we're doing the interviewing. That's the process when we're doing, when it's this kind of an opening, the um, committee does the interviewing and selecting, usually, uh, otherwise it's done by uh, another group of people. Okay. Great. So I have a few questions. Sure. So please tell us about yourself and why you applied to the advisory committee and what that means to you. Okay. Well, I am a young professional. I'm new to Bolton. We, uh, my wife and I, relocated from Rochester, New York to Massachusetts last year. Uh, moved to this community, bought a home, uh, moved in uh, in December of last year. So we've been here almost exactly a year now. Um, I'm a sales manager for a distributor named Expedex. We're a division of International Paper, um, which is a Fortune 100 uh, company. And um, I'm responsible for, it's about uh, 13 uh, professionals right now in New England. Uh, my role is to drive profitable growth within uh, the business. Um, so why I'm interested in this position, I uh, made a commitment to myself and my wife that when we uh, bought a home that uh, that'd be hopefully the last home or last town that uh, we moved to um, in Massachusetts. And uh, why I'm interested, I want to get involved in the community. I'm new to the community. I believe I uh, bring some different perspective. Um, spending time in Rochester, I spent about 10 years of my life there, and I grew up in Vermont. Uh, my entire childhood was spent in one town, in a small town in Vermont, that I believe resembles um, the values and uh, similar makeup of, of Bolton. So um, I want to be involved. I want to uh, make an impact. I'd like to influence. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that for okay. now. Okay. Um, experiences that you can bring to the committee and that can come from maybe what you've done elsewhere or what you know your work experience or how do you see that you, you're going to uh, mm -hmm. bring yeah, to the, the committee? Okay. Um, well, within my current job, I, I, I uh, have to manage profit and loss, which um, I, I know this isn't a, a profit center by all means, but. Uh, <laughs> currently, uh, <laughs> um, it's a uh, so. It's, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. It's just which, what what, what experiences you're bringing okay. to the committee and which. Yeah. So um, I, I bring a variety of business experience, um, personal experience on a uh, um, volunteer level. I, I was a coach for for uh, five to six years um, at the college level as well as volunteering at the youth level uh, for baseball um, back in Rochester, New York. Um, so I work very well. I played on uh, sport teams my entire life, so I'm used to uh, being in a team environment, um, uh, very comfortable in a team environment and enjoy a cohesive team and um, working on uh, resolutions and such like that. Good. We've anticipated the next four questions. No. <laughs> I know. <it's, laughs> no, that's good. I, so, um, other experiences, but I'm just going to read them because I think that's fair. You. Have you had other experiences volunteering in Bolton or other towns? And you've just you've talked I about not in not in Bolton, not but, in Bolton. but uh, other volunteer things that you've done. You said it was the sports. The sports. It's uh, my volunteer work has been uh, mainly in uh, the athletic. Um, oh, yeah, um, I love this town. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of, you know, what I believe in is in ath athletics, um, hunting, fishing, farming. Uh, that's, that's what I grew up with. Um, helping my neighbors bring in hay, um, helping my aunt and uncle uh, milk the cows. Mm. And uh, um, it, I love hunting with my father and uncle uh, over the past weekend in Vermont. So, um, I think a lot of what I bring uh, in my history, my past, uh, fits right into this community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you understand the time commitment and will you be able to meet it? I do. Um, I'm married, but I do not have other commitments that would take me away from Tuesday night meetings. So I can fully commit to uh, every Tuesday night, except for maybe a, uh, a vacation in the middle of winter if that's allowed. I don't know. Well, we have, yeah. uh, we've allowed that. For, we have yeah, school we, vacation we got. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a lot of folks if that's important. Um, yeah, um, so that's great. Kind of Once we've all missed an occasional meeting yeah. due to some mm -hmm. unexpected. Sure. Yeah. As long as we have a quorum, we're good. Have you missed yeah. a meeting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the course podcast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the course podcast. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was out for months, but that was because I was injured. My father died. Yeah. I think there was one. Yeah, well, I think there was one. You were We had multiple transportation commitments. Yeah, so it can happen. It can happen. But, it, but because we're a small group, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, that it's it's important that, that you just understand that. I understand. You know, with four people yeah. to make a quorum. Um, how do you feel about working in teams? You've touched on that, and are you open to other people's opinions? Absolutely. Completely open to other people's opinions. I love that. I, I believe I feed off other people's opinions, and uh, will either strengthen my own or, or uh, you know, um, expand on somebody else's. So I'm going to ask, um, the last one is for you to ask us questions, but I think before that I'll ask if any of the other committee members have questions for you. I'm interested in knowing why you chose Bolton to move to. Good question. We said small town. Yeah. Well, then let him answer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask you. <laughs> the tax rate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. It could be because of the work. Okay. Um, now, let's see. It was an excellent it question. Is it worth yeah. seeing? We'll let Colin time. answer the yeah. question yeah. Yeah. that was raised it. to him. Okay. Yeah. So there was a <laughs> there was a logistics component to uh, to Bolton. Uh, my wife at the time was working in Connecticut, and I was working in Wilmington, Mass. In where? Um, Wilmington. Wilmington. So this so happened to be uh, right in the middle. But um, so this was the area we were looking in. But I, I think what really um, sorry I should be addressing you. Um, I'm really nobody. You're right. So why I chose Bolton, small town very nice town driving through the center of town um, uh, especially this time of year everything appears to be well kept um, the homes all have um, distance between them um, for the most part um, I just I, I like I love nature I love the outdoors I, uh, I love a sense of community uh, school district um, working with our realtor uh, this was uh, the hotspot, the Neshoba Regional School, um, great school district. So I plan, we plan to raise a family, and um, we want to be in a town that has a great school system, and I can feel safe. There's, I have a sense of safety when I came here. So um, I guess those are some of the reasons. So the tax rate didn't scare you? Yeah, it certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's a good answer. Yeah, and, and I would say that's a. Uh, a major reason why I'm sitting here today, um, if not the predominant reason why I'm sitting here, is I'd like to, if possible, um, help maybe impact that and change that for, for the positive. So you've been in town for a short time. We learned um, why you chose Bolton, mm -hmm. which is probably similar to the reason that many of us did. Uh, I'd be curious in your short time here what you've identified as the you know other than the tax rate which which you just mentioned which of course is one of the bigger ones you know what 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 you've read what you're concerned with what how, how closely you've been following the sort of the major issues that are facing the town right so I've been uh, I've been uh, keeping up tremendously on, on issues this far um, I've been trying to you know settle and get a feel for things but I do understand that um, business is a uh, challenge to, to bring business here and, and maintain the balance and quality of life that I think everybody that grew up in this town and maybe uh, uh, lives in this town today, they want, they want the balance and how do we get the balance and um, how, do we, how do we attract business, how do we um, balance the, the taxes. Um, that's the, the major issue that, I, that I've that i seen. Um, I, I went to the town meeting 
uh, this past year and uh, listened to the, all the different warrants and um, you know if it was the mosquitoes uh, you know I know that I understand that's a that's an issue there's the, the zoning issues with the barns and uh, how you can whether or not you can have a business at your home um, but much more than that I'm, I, I'll be honest I'm not aware of uh, many significant issues yeah, it's on the ceiling. It's mm -hmm. um, so when you moved here, yeah, and you, your your wife mm -hmm. is traveling back and forth every day. She was. And um, have you looked into coaching a sports team or volunteering in the community outside of the advisory committee? I haven't taken that leap yet, um, but I. Uh, I would like to. I'd like to get involved at, with either youth sports or uh, potentially the high school coaching. Uh, I have a I have a passion for hockey and baseball. Um, the the problem that I'm wrestling with right now is uh, I, I have an arm that doesn't throw, <laughs> so uh, just through overuse and I'm playing the sport of baseball. So uh, I think we all think that. Right. So I. Uh, I really wanted to, to get that fixed and really wanted to be the guy that could go out there and, and play with the kids and show them how to, you know, how the right way to do it. Um, and so obviously you don't have to have a child in no. to, to want to do that. No, not at all. That's great. Yeah. So I'm just curious. I'm just said curious. That my experience this is in, in, I mean, not just Bolton, but other places, that if you don't have kids, it's difficult to meet people. Right. Well, I don't have children, and I haven't had any trouble. No. I have my dog. See, that's it. So I wander around the street. No, it's just it's just I think it, I think it's much easier here, actually. Of course, I'm not being interviewed. Hang around the dump on Saturday. You know, I don't go to the dump. I'm not that's a dump right. person. Take my time. I think it's, 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 it's yeah. easier here than it is in a lot of towns. There's coffee shops we go to. Yeah, I found, and I've lived a lot of different places. Four year old too. Yes, and it's good to have that kind of really. Okay. Uh, Any questions for us? Uh, question would be, what does uh, what's the what's the what greatest? No, no, yeah, right, yeah, what are we getting now? Uh, what's the greatest challenge that uh, you as a committee face today? Well, um, I th I think it's sort of determining, well, it's, it's really looking at the whole town and, and being fiscally responsible in a, a, as a whole. You know, we, we do spend an awful lot of time looking at every little, every little tiny thing on everybody's budget. Right. We do that. But then we have to step back and say, okay, we have some money uh, that's raised through taxes and it might be, and we have some excess money and how do we, how, what, how would we recommend that that be used? I think that's yeah, the I biggest challenge as far as I'm concerned. It's efficiency versus frugality, I think. Okay. Um, one of the things that's kind of startling about being on this committee is two-thirds of the budget's out of our control altogether. Okay. Two-thirds of our budget is set by the school district. And this committee and this this committee really has no say in anything regarding the school budget. Uh, the reason for that, and I'll just go into this because you're new, is that they have their own school committee that's independent of all three towns, and that committee votes its own budget. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, their, their request for funds gets sent to the towns, and all the town can do is either vote that number up or down. Mm -hmm. Can't go in and change any components of those budgets. Um, so we're left with a third of the budget to deal with, and then we've got sort of the fixed cost, which is our debt, which is our um, um, you know, insurance costs, which health care, sort of things, another set of items we have no control over the cost of. Right. So when you get down to it, we've really only got influence over 20% of a 20 or $22 million budget. And yet we, f we find ways to spend every Tuesday night for 14 weeks <laughs> to go over. 
that small portion of the budget. Sure. And then, of course, you know, um, service. You, you <laughs> <laughs> so that Bob's making another public service. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a challenge where you sit there and you go, why should I take a thousand dollars out of this budget when there's forty four million dollars, you know, or whatever in the school budget and you know, how do you play you got you have to take that into account. You know, you can't constantly be sacrificing uh, the well being of the town mm -hmm. for the sake of the school district. And and then we, we do have large capital items that mm -hmm. we have to figure out how to pay for. We, we took on a lot of debt the past 10 years, and we, we're, we're, we're burning it off, but it ain't pretty, mm -hmm. and it ain't fast. Okay. So, um, it, so it's the juggling act. Right. So, Bob, when you put it like that, <laughs> and what you're saying is we could, if the school committee has got two-thirds and they can hammer it out in four, four hours. hours on one day, an hour. we should just meet we, one night. Yes, yes, we should be able to do our whole budget in one night in January, and that would be it. The, the shortage. Okay, but, then, yeah, we're but, we're then, but then, we're but then, no but then, you know, Randy and I have to come up with some other excuse well, to get out of the house on Tuesday nights. <laughs> we find other ways. The short answer for me to your question is: it's we we try to balance the, the supply and demand question, right? We have, there's many demands on the money mm -hmm. that this town has uh, has uh, from raising uh, from generating property taxes and and other sources of revenue. Um, but there's many demands on that money and you know about the tax rate and you know that two-thirds of our budget is sort of fixed mm -hmm. without our control and so the equation that uh, we need to try to fit into is becoming more and more oppressive and problematic for us mm. um, there are many ways we can pay for things uh, that have different impacts on the tax rate and on the budget. Uh, there are trade-offs that we're unfortunately forced to make. Uh, and I would say that, you know, 90% of our time is trying to to, uh, to get this scale to balance. Um, gotcha. and, and doing so with keeping in mind the, the variety, the, you know, like all the polls on it and, and that different people right. have different needs in town. There's and that's not something an that endless we, supply of money. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. But every group, every group coming, the, you right. know, whatever they're looking the at is, is very, very important to them. Right. right. And so, yeah, trying to figure all that out and, and balance things as best mm -hmm. as possible. You know, there are some people in town that believe that we should cut services and start giving tax relief. Um, there are some people at this table that believe that we've been here long enough cutting more and more and more to the point where we think that we've cut to sort of the proverbial bone. Mm -hmm. Yet the school system continues to submit budgets that are three and a half percent growth year over year, and we're asking our departments to submit zero growth year over year. And in some cases, we're even cutting that. Right. And the reason that we have to do that is because we, we have, have to, to cover make, the school. We have, we have to make the budget balance. There's no, um, yeah. There's no bar. There's no. Uh, it's not a, a federal government budget. That's for sure. Right. Sure. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, thank you. Great answer. Yeah, thank you. And um, so, what's happening? When it happened now is this is an open meeting, so we will have discussion about um, the three candidates. You're certainly all welcome to stay, and then we will um, see if they you know to go from there. See what happens. So. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I, Do you want to know about coaching? Hmm? Sure. We can help. I was going to say before before we start, I, I uh, I've never been in a position in my tenure on the committee where we've had three candidates and for an open position. I think it's great. I think it. Offers, you can stay. offers us if you, some you, you know, sure. Do you want to? If you want to know what you would think of you. No, 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 no. Not so much that is. Whoever gets selected comes right up here. No, they have to right? be sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And they oh. think, yeah. Okay, I'm here. Is that why you're here, Sam? Are you here? The benefits. Well, that's assuming we make a selection. Right. Yeah. Okay, and the other thing. I just don't think. I don't want to see anybody.
<laughs> no, 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 nobody should leave. And really, um, like, oh, I should yep. let Randy finish. Oh, no, I was just saying, I've been here a long time. time. Uh, Bob and I, I think, are the most tenured folks on the committee, and I um, uh, we've never had a, an opening that's that's drawn this much interest, and I we've been, nice we've been um, clamoring for interest for years and years and years. So regardless of what happens uh, either tonight or in the next uh, coming weeks um, on, on our selection, I, I just want to thank everybody for applying. And, 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 if, and if you're not selected uh, in this go around, I would say uh, to not be discouraged and to, uh, uh, to continue to, to follow the committee uh, with interest because um, you know I feel fresh perspective is important on this committee and some of us uh, old timers, uh, <coughs> Bob and me, are uh, are uh, are getting. Uh, you, me too. You know, you just get, you. you just get used to things being a certain <laughs> way, and that's not necessarily yeah, good. That's right. Yeah. Uh, th this is a this is a committee that uh, that I think uh, uh, you know. To Bob's point, is uh, there's a certain shelf life. Yeah. And I think that some of us are reaching that, and I think that we need to. Uh, <laughs> to keep the candidate pool uh, strong and, and vibrant. So, anyway. Okay. 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 So, I'm, I'm joking. I'm opening up uh, discussion of the candidates. Mm -hmm. A little awkward. This is awkward for us, I'll tell just, you. Just, um, you don't know, it's an open meeting, so you do whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm, I'm only just watching on TV. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Dave's not going anyway. Dave, Dave's, Dave's here uh, every no, week. This, so I mean, this is why we get paid the big bucks. Is for the <laughs> no, but whatever you're, com whatever you're comfortable doing. doing. I was serious before. Whoever gets selected, mm -hmm. we can yeah. get you sworn in this evening, I think, and then you can Absolutely. take, yeah, your, yeah, take yeah, your seat uh, at the table yes, tonight. Madam okay. Chairman, yes, if I could just say, there's yeah, also yeah, plenty of other openings in other committees. There's opening on capital planning and a whole myriad of things. No, I am. She's standing against us already. We love everything. You are doing recruiting in a way. So you do whatever you're comfortable. Yeah. We're going to have the conversation anyway. Yeah, so um, okay. if you're certainly welcome to stay. You should. I think you should stay. We're sort of taking this. I, I mean, I'm taking this kind of like how we're going to handle this based on just recently there was, and I don't know if you saw the select selectman meeting about um, the school committee, which. Um, I was sitting in the back, and I was like, "How could they do this? You know that they're you know all of the, the mem all of the candidates are there, and they're talking about them." And but uh, I'll just express I think this is a very exciting group of people, and I'm really glad that you all applied. And we'll see where we go from there. Any any conversation, any discussion about folks that you feel comfortable. <laughs> Okay. okay. This is exactly what happened. This is exactly what happened. So I'll start it. So um, uh, if, if no one else is going to do it, I, um, I think that um, sometimes the concern is about um, you know whether there's a financial background, and I don't. I think that that um, may on on its face look like you know something that we um, that's very very important for the committee. But I, I know that not that this is certainly not a requirement, and also um, that um, even if you had, a, I, I, I truly believe this because I I am a CPA and I work I, um, I'm not a finance person but I'm a CPA so I'm an accountant and I have to go and talk to Julie all the time because it's it's a very different and I think what, more what you can bring to the community. And what I'm hearing from all, all three of you is that you can, you know, sort of be very thoughtful, um, think about what the town, you think about what the town's wants and needs are, and I think that is really important to sit back and be able to um, sort of um, analyze what these different <coughs> requests are and how it fits into the big picture. And I think you can do that whether you have a finance background or not. Well, I can speak for that because I don't. And I remember first sitting on this board and doing a lot of homework. And you still can't get up to speed with people who have a degree <laughs> in finance. Um, but I also felt like I had a lot to offer and still do, even though I don't have the back 
background they have, and I have relied on them a lot, but have learned a lot from them, and I'm clearly not shy about saying what I think. And that's what you have to do on here if you don't have that financial background. And you'll, even without it, you still will be part of the finance end of it. Some of the things you may never understand, but um, I guarantee you'll catch on <laughs> quickly. Just yeah. No, I mean, we've had some good members that have not been, um, you know, not, not come from a financial background. Um, I think some people are, are uh, taken aback by some of the discussion that we've been having recently, that we've been really thinking strategically and outside the box a little bit. Municipal finance is a, is a muck as it is. Um, and yet we're trying to not to game it but we're trying to be strategic about it and talking about you know paying off uh paying off debt and manipulating the tax rate with some free cash and there's some concepts that we've been wrestling with recently that are a little bit more advanced but i think getting back to it the root of what we do is 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 digest and advise uh, uh, allocating limited resources to abundant uh, uh, uh needs and demands and you don't necessarily need a financial background to do that and what you think is in the best interest for the town. Um, you know, I mentioned this earlier um, when we were interviewing David, and I, I still, I mean, you know, um, I personally think that we need to inject the committee with some fresh perspective. Uh, you know, everybody at the table has an opinion and a vote. Um, I... Uh, respect uh, David immensely and his commitment to the town and his uh, vast financial background and his uh, his service uh, on, on the select board and this advisory committee. I learned a lot, David, from you early on in my, in my tenure on this committee. Uh, I've been troubled a little bit by some of the uh, sort of the noise and the chatter that's happened uh, since you left uh, advisory. Um, some of the critical nature of the discussion and, and I just think for that reason for me um, fresh perspective is sort of where I'd like to see uh, see us fill the position with um. I would agree I, I um, clearly Dave the the perspective and history the body of knowledge is you know is is impressive um, but the the continual back and forth I mean I was you, I, I spend a lot of time in the newspaper. And I feel it's critical being here, and even being on selectmen. And this is where you and I disagree, but I just think, especially with selectmen, even more of a reason to stay out of the paper. And so you you made a comment this evening, um, but it wasn't a whole. It wasn't you know full on that you'd you'd stay out of the the, the paper. And I, and I think that is, um, I think it's critical, it, it, you, you know being on the board. And then finally. Um, you're effectively a de facto member anyways you're gonna be here <laughs> so um, yeah. it's like getting too right well I, I will I will make a motion that um, uh, we, we appoint uh, Stacia Downey to the advisory committee okay do I have a second I'll second that okay. so now we can have is there further discussion So what I, I, I'm going to, I'll say something because I can't stand not to, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I too like, um, uh, I, I like to see this committee be representative of the town. And um, so I like the fact that we have um, uh, two people that are really, that are um, new to the, uh, both, well, new and old to the town, and, and, but also young. And, and represent that group of that group of people and take a different perspective. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind, of course, the entire population of the town. If you don't know, my my interest um, is very much with um, our older folks in town. So I think it's I think that we can all have our interests and 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 still be able to see what's right for the whole town. Sure. Um, I like. Um, I think Colin, you really are a very exciting young man. But I, but I, what I like about um, 
and I, I shouldn't have said that that way, but you know, uh, resident here. Um, is the, you, you, uh, Stasha takes, you know, has been here as a, as a young person and then come back again. I mean, is growing up here and come back, and I think she can bring a, a, a nice picture to the town. So, sure. And let me just add to that, too, um, Colin, for what it's worth for me. I think a year in town is great. I think you need, uh, at least for me, uh, more, more, a more, uh, more a wider perspective, right? Which you'll clearly get when you start to read the paper and well, uh, attend meetings or, or watch on paper. television. And, and that's not a bad, and that's certainly not a bad thing. And, and I started out when I was young in the town on the personnel committee, which is sort of now defunct. And there are many ways to get your feet wet. Capital planning uh, would be a perfect uh, avenue for you. They're looking for people now. They do some similar things to what we do. Uh, Brad was on there uh, prior, and so you can get some information from him as well. Uh, I'd also say too, for me, the decision um, is a little bit easier, and this is not without uh, any disrespect to anybody sitting in this room, but this is a very temporary term that we're filling here, um, essentially, right? Because uh, what happens is after a term gets fulfilled, it goes to the nominating committee, Pam, correct me if I'm wrong, to reappoint mm -hmm. the, the person. Absolutely. And, and, and with all, uh, um, in, often the person gets reappointed if they, if they so desire, but if there's, a, if, there's a, if there's not a fit, I think this is a good opportunity to, um, uh, to fill a, a spot for a period of time, mm -hmm. and then it turns the normal course of, of, a, of a reappointment for a, a longer period. And so I, I think we're in that good, um, that good spot. So it's not just reappointed. Does you open up? Uh, do you, does it open up entirely? Does it, every position, when it comes at the end of the three years, usually, open up? Usually, we, what happens is when I think there's two terms that will expire in June, and if those two folks choose not to re-up, then we advertise. Okay. okay. We do give the people, the incumbent, the opportunity to stay. Okay. So any um, any further discussion? Okay, can we uh, want to um, go well, ahead and... You know, I don't know sure. if that's quite the right way to do it. Do what? Are we going to nominate a person and then vote or not vote? Yeah, mm -hmm. we already did. There's a motion. There's a motion I to... I should have said something earlier. Maybe a struggle. <laughs> um, I have to look for my, my proper... Um, I mean, we can just go around and... And have everybody. Do we have a motion on the floor? So I think we do. We um, unless Paul wants to withdraw it. I mean, George, 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 I had the second. You had the second. Oh, Bob's motion. Uh, I have the right I'm to comfortable start. voting loud, but if there are folks that aren't, then well, we, we need to. We have to vote. I mean, we or not vote. Well, is 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 there some people want to come to? Some people think this is come to a vote too fast. Well, I think Connie's worried, and I'm just speaking for you. She's. I think she, if if somebody is not in favor of the motion, they're going to vote no, and yet the person still might win the win the motion, and then there may there may be some weird feelings. <laughs> I mean, this is weird to do, right? I mean, it let's all strange. let's all yeah. recognize I mean, that this is extremely uncomfortable for lots of folks. Right? Okay, David. If a motion has been made to for someone, you can still say that you'd rather have somebody else as part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Right, so, but so, so he this, can this, also withdraw this, his motion, and we can do it a different way. But, but even in the straw poll, we still have to vote the, at the end of a straw poll. I mean, everybody would have to say what, I mean? what their, oh, what their so opinion was. The straw wouldn't poll wouldn't, wouldn't choose. We cannot see the ballot. We cannot see the ballot. There's no point in okay. changing it, because I didn't want anybody's. No, you can't, you can't you do know, secret ballot. Okay. open meeting. It, yeah. That's correct, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. But you can now use this opportunity to speak on what your opinion is and who who you see as a, you know. Well, I, I'm a little torn um, because, um, and, I, and I do feel that David knows uh, so much, but I do feel like with knowing David, we, and if we appointed someone else, we have Two, <laughs> two for one. But um, I, I was here a year, and I dove into things in, in in this town in a year. And it doesn't take you long to figure it out. In the, after being here a year, I mean, I 
Um, I got involved right away. I was here two months and was had my calendar full of volunteer work. Uh, and you learn a lot about this town. So I'm not going to use the one year against you, but I can see where being on a different committee might benefit you more than being on the advisory committee. Um, to start. To start. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I was a little swayed between the two of you. Uh, and I know you're probably very cerebral because <laughs> it's very difficult to sit up here and answer questions. And I have a feeling that y your answers um, probably were not as polished as when he spoke. But I know that you know this town really, really well. And I've been here a long time. Um, she also went first. first. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and, 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 and I, I do this first. Yeah. 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 Well, let's also be. Uh, so. It's not about. So that's, yeah. that's where I am. And Sorry, that's, uh, okay. that's okay. We'll jump right in. Did you have something oh. you'd like to say? We have an after it for you? Yeah, I mean, it just the. the the way that the motion was made, that that, that was my concern, is um, that I'm glad all three are here. I mean, I'll, I'll just tell my my the way I would rank w would be be Colin, Stasha, and Dave. Uh, one, two, three. That That's where I would lay. And um, I, I completely think it's new blood. <coughs> two for one with Dave sitting in the crowd. That's kind of where I where I sit, yeah. and um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's where I'd be. Thank you. Well, I mean, people, if, if anybody else is interested in ranking, we can do that. But I think we can call for, I mean, call for a vote and see where it okay, where it falls. So we, the motion that's in front of the floor is. Um, that Stasha Downey. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Do we need a simple majority here or do we need a quorum? I think we need three out of five, right? Do we need three out of five or four, four out of five? Four out of six. What do we need? We're down. Add a vote. Hmm? For quorum, you need your four, but I think for a vote. I think for a vote, I think, need it's a majority. I, I think it's a simple majority. I think we need three out of five, but I yeah. just wanted to make sure before yeah. we took the vote. So. If you ask those kinds of questions after the vote, yeah. all of a sudden another agenda appears. Uh, if we were voting on anything else, we're going to vote on a transfer yeah. request tonight. Right. You yeah. Vote. So we're going to get three. three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Quorum. Just wanted to make sure. We have the quorum. So we just need to get everybody. I mean, I know. I feel so awkward being here. I know. You're awkward. We're I know. This is going to be riveting television. All right. Let's do this. What are you going to do? You're changing your, your no, 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 I'm well, not. Let's I, do this. I'm in a motion. Let's let's okay. Go ahead. So let's let's uh, okay. The motion that's before us is that um, uh, that Stasha Downey be appointed for the opening in, on the advisory committee. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. So um, given that um, three. Voted for Stasha, and um, so you are the new advisory committee member. Congratulations! Thank you so much. <laughs> and um, you heard, uh, you certainly have heard Colin a lot of enthusiasm, oh, right? Yeah. Thank good? you. Good. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good. And David, you Colin, know how? I, I implore you to uh, please, please join the capital planning committee. Like immediately. <laughs> There's a select, there's a select, I think they meet on Thursday nights. There's a selectors meeting Thursday night. You could, if you got uh, in touch with those folks, you would be uh, potentially even able to get on the agenda for them. But I think it's, and after this meeting, if we still have time, if you're here, I'll, I'll be happy to explain to you what they do and I think you'll I you. I can probably it. get them up to speed. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, you were on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. You're welcome to stay, Stasha. You um, can you swear her in? I sure can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Great. Great. I just I don't know how to come shake your hands. Like there's no. No, but just thank you very much. It's an, I'm I'm very excited to be a part of this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta go home. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yes. I love you. <laughs> Yes, take care. Uh, bathroom? I don't know. Oh. We're about to go. <laughs>
can't keep track of everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just because Bob got up and left doesn't mean we're yes, taking a seat right here. I don't know. Julia, so badly. Oh. 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 Oh.
it wasn't enough. We had to we had to cover a premium increase, which is which is not this. Okay. That's something this else. number here. That so this is something that came out of res our reserve fund before, and this shows that we've spent everything in the account, and now the insurance company is asking for yet more money because of the results of this audit. Okay. And and basically, this is not something we have a lot of this. You know, we just got to do it. Yeah. We yeah. Just gotta do it. Yeah. We have to do it. Yeah, well, we have to be mindful that the account that which we're transferring it from had a balance of a hundred thousand dollars in it for the whole year, and we've already done. Uh, I'm uncomfortable with the amount that we've already done sitting yeah. here in December. Yeah. Right. So, but. I didn't bring it. Uh, uh, June, 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 June. June. I don't know what we have in reserve. I, they didn't have a chance to look at it. 92,794 dollars. How much? 92,794 dollars. So this is, we already spent 10% in the first five months, which we would never do, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to be on record to say that. Okay. And, and, and in some cases we do, you know, people come up with transfer requests and we don't honor them or meet them, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the conversation or not all of it. So, uh, but in this case, you know, it's a worker's cost. Uh, Don Lowe, who's the town administrator, okay. so he's he's his, his budget is his. He's responsible for it. And basically, he's got the bill, and we have to pay workers' right. comp insurance. And yep. So yep. there's no. Yes. Way so even though we go through the process, um, there's really. I mean, you can vote kind of semantics. Yeah. So we have a motion, and we have a second uh, to uh, to transfer uh, 1,071 from advisory reserve into 9 912 but 5171. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 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 Now, um, <coughs> I, I, I have as the number th three, third item, um, we got a, a letter from Neshoba Regional School District, not we, but um, the town got a letter from Neshoba Regional School District asking for a participant for the Space Needs Committee, which will be looking at um, the needs in the high school and in the, in the future uh, it's going to be a group of people representatives from each of the three towns and um, I did ask um, in, in, well, Bob, Bob indicated he would you know be happy to serve in that in that position they did ask for somebody from advisory so um, uh, we have I, I don't think do we have to vote on this I don't, I don't know if we do we, we can't. Well, it's a little bit different. This is a little bit different. I move that we appoint Bob Stansky to the Neshoba Regional School District Space Needs Committee. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Hit him hard, Bob. You're hired. Oh, sure, why um, one that one, but I decided that was fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Somewhere in here. Oh, yeah. Not, so no. It'll okay. be interesting. Um, oh, so um, I went to the um, Tri Town meeting on November 6th. David, you were there as well. Um, I, this is my, my third Tri Town meeting. Tri Town meeting is uh, once a month um, amongst the three towns. Where um, pretty much Bolton goes, that's what I'm seeing, and and then maybe a couple of other, maybe some other folks go. So um, and it's held the supposedly held the first Wednesday of each month, though so that's a, a sort of a moving target as well, um, and discuss issues and things that come up of interest to the three towns. So this was quite a, I thought a hefty agenda for what goes on, um, and I just wanted to kind of recap what happened. So. The first item was the Neshoba Regional School District budget forecast, and I know that some of the you know some of the questions have come up here with what's the process? You know, can we? I mean, I had a question: Can we be sitting in on their meetings and being in, you know at least be able to say something? And pretty much what um, King, what's his first name? George, George King, who is the vice assistant, so, assistant, vice superintendent. assistant superintendent, but he seems to be the financial guy. He said that the way that it works is that the departments, the various school departments, are going to be submitting their budget requests from now through the end of December, uh, January, uh, late January. The school committee will get them, and then on February first, which that's the first Saturday in February, they will be having their famous four-hour meeting, which they will be going through. You know, and how many forty million, forty million dollar budget, six million dollar, forty-six million dollar budget. 
and um, that's when we can go. It doesn't seem like there's any other time that really um, we would be able to influence anything, and probably not even then, but I, I'll tell you, I'll be at that February 1st meeting and certainly welcome people to go. The budget must be adopted by March 15th, and they're requiring level services. That's not level funding. I always think that that's an interesting thing, where we require level funding. So that means if you spent $100 last year, you spend $100 this year, if you have, you can change your services, but you can't go more than $100. They say level services, so that same service might cost $130, yeah, and, they, and they can pass it. Same, so. same services usually rise with inflation, which typically is 2.5%, 3% a year, and that's exactly what the budget seems to go up every year. Yeah, right. right. So, and then I asked a question because they had just released with their E&D, which is equivalent I, mean, I don't remember what ENT stands Excess for. Excess and deficiency. Excess and deficiency is equivalent to what to our um, a free cash yes. number is, and they have no, two. No, no, no. It's our stabilization. It's our stabilization. Well, they spend no, it more. No, no. I free think cash. free cash. Free cash. Yeah. Yay. Okay. No, they don't need to vote to get it out. Right? No. So it's they they have two point two million dollars in E and D at this point, and so I asked what they were going to spend it on, and they said approximately one million will go back into the operating budget, which is very different than what we do with our free cash. We don't use free cash well, for operating. Hold on, hold on. But remember that that's what they did last year, but then it replenished it itself. another million. Right. I'm not saying that, but this is what yeah. It so just, just like, what the battle that we have all the time, where we're getting all this replenishment and we're trying to set 250 and use it right for good use, um, they're, they're always having two million, and they're using a million, million. and getting a million back. It's so they're they're not, in my opinion, being smart about the way they use E&D. Yeah. And that's just, just the way they want. Well, that's, that is the way they want. I mean, that's it. It's nothing to do with it. <laughs> I can see you there smiling. It's just the way they want. Well, they I'm want just smiling. I'm just enjoying myself yeah. in your and opinion. It's awful. Because, because they're going, they, <laughs> I'd like to hear yours on how, we, we have no how okay, they're that. going about doing this. Well, it's like anything. I mean, they're obviously being conservative when they're putting out their budget and they're causing this excess money at the end of the year. Um, and it, again, it's that fight whether or not it should be coming back to the towns as you guys think it should be going back to the taxpayers or if they should be keeping it and using it for more operations and things like that. Because um, once the money's there, I mean, you want to use it. So their argument, not to, so their argument is, We've always benchmarked our, our free cash or our stabilization as a percentage of our operating budget, which happens to be, let's just call it 20 million, right? So at 20 million, we have 5%. a million. And at 40 million, they should have 2 million, right? So that that's how they're getting comfortable with the 2 million. I, I guess I can't argue with that logic, right? Well, it's just, <clears throat> my problem is, why don't you just leave excess and deficiency alone and just, you know the revenue's coming in, just, you, yeah. just pay for it. What's what's yeah. the big deal? It's not you know, they're taking out as much as they put as they replenish every year. Um, so, but the Terry's greater point, we don't have a lot of. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. You didn't really bring that up. It's, I was curious in how they used it. And they said that they also will be uh, targeting some what they call semi-capital items to use, uh, which is which is um, repairs. Yeah. Right, because capital items are funded by you. That's right. right. <laughs> they, don't, they don't need to go in. They don't need so, to go there. So, last so the year, painting. Why can't that be painting? So last year I went to all the Tritons as well, mm -hmm. and um, I mentioned during the, I, I used that as a forum to talk to Michael and George about our level funded request at the time mm -hmm. for our departments, and I had said, please, I implore you to keep that in mind as we get disproportional more and more. Uh, and I, I asked them to uh, uh, also uh, consider more E and D release as in years past. And nothing. No. Yeah. So. Well, and I think too. You said why the painting? Why not? Why not? Why not paint? Because not only because we pay for it. If they don't find it important enough or prioritize it to use that money to do that, why should we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Why should we say we will pay for it? Of course, that's our school. I mean, that's one of the problems. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's well we just player. sunk 250 grand worth of free cash into those. We in sure did. Last year. I'm sure there'll be more requests. Okay, so that was that was one part of the discussion. Then we then they then there was a, a discussion item on um, Shelby Regional School District capital requests and the establishment of this committee that Bob is is going to be 
uh, rep representing us on. Um, and they said that last year, and I, I don't know who knows what here, but that there was a five-year plan that was submitted to each of the towns yep. by, and I, we should probably get our hands on that. That would be yeah. nice. We have it. You have it? We have it? I, I know. Tom, that doesn't cool. include the high school. Um, it has to include. I thought the high school was not in it. It was for right. Warren Sawyer and Emerson. Right. And they were going to well, maybe because of this is the high yeah. school. I'm well, sure. just, just remember that, that this committee that I've now been appointed to is made up of selectmen and finance committee members. So the issue, and there's no parents on it that I'm aware of. Well, so mm -hmm. the, issue, the issue is not what should we do. The issue is how should we pay for it. So is the underlying premise, Bob, that they're running out of space and they're trying to figure out where, where and when to expand? No, I think the underlying premise is we have to do, well, first off, they Science. just got, they just went through the accreditation process at the high school. And, 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 and you know what, I haven't been to a first meeting yet, so everything I'm about to say is purely speculation on my part, because I haven't even talked to anybody about this. But they've just finished the accreditation process and they probably came back with some shortcomings. They got accredited. I guess they got accredited well, but even no matter how good your, your accreditation is, that committee group of people always comes back with, and here's the things you need to do to improve. Right. So there's that list. There's the fact that the science labs well, we know, that's you know, already. didn't get addressed a couple of years ago. Right. Um, you know, there's the weight room, other stuff like well, that. Cafeteria. I'm there every day, and they've had to purchase these. If you've ever been in the school and you walk down the main hall towards the cafeteria, they have the tables now in the main hall because yeah. kids are sitting on the floors because there's not enough places for them to sit to eat. So they bought these benches that um, are these half tables with a bench. So the bench pushes up mm -hmm. and, and they're all lining every yeah. piece of corridor because they don't have the room to sit to eat. So, so my suspicion is, is that there's a list of projects and the question is how much support can they get from the towns? You know, we're we're still burning off our debt from the, the, the years from ago, yeah. from from the uh, library and the uh, oh, yeah. public safety building. Right. Because I understand. I understand. Right? Stowe is reviewing taking on a whole bunch of capital projects. So plus know. their new school is coming on what next year? It came on. Oh, it came, came, came on. So the but debt, the debt will hit the books. Come on till next year. The yeah. debt will hit the books next year, but the finance committee will be aware of that. So again, I don't. I, my impression, my sense of this is not. This is a committee about. Let's look at what our. Let's try to figure out what our space needs are. I think the administration has identified space needs and is trying to figure out how to okay, well, how I to generate it. the financing to make it happen. Because they know that there's been some. Pre, uh, so we'll see. Restraint or the meeting is next Tuesday, the first. The tenth. Are they going to conflict, Bob? As Budgets, are they always going to be Tuesdays? I don't know. It's a good question, though. What if they conflict with our... I don't know. Our standing you can find out. I'll you find out. out. Yeah, back to us. And, and um, can you just plan that, that <coughs> we'll, we'll anytime the next meeting first. after you meet? I don't know how often well, it is. Well, this is a new committee. That you'll be just give us a response. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And the, uh, the other thing on the capital request is the concession stand overrun, which had been, I think, maybe 250000 is now down between seventy five and hundred. If that makes you feel any more comfortable, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, then there was a discussion of uh, COLA projections, and I might not have so all the these notes. School. I understand that. I just heard we have two million sitting around doing nothing. It's a snowflake off an iceberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take care of it. I'm sorry. I don't know. I think the question, I think it was asked what's, how it's going to be paid for. I'm, probably is coming from the end. What? The, the, the overrun. 75 overrun. They yeah. said that it, it it's wouldn't not, come to yeah, us. Yeah, it wouldn't come to us. That's going to be They're going to find it. They'll find it. Yeah, but find where they find it. it. Imagine it'll be tough, though. But they have all those. No, they have, they too, rent out their Too much has stuff. come from us, is yeah, what, right. what they're saying. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Sort of um, like our own little situation. Too much has come to us in retrospect. Mm -hmm. We raised more money than we need. They raised more money than they needed. And they're going to use part of it to take care of the overrun. Okay, just uh, just be brief on the rest of it. The, there was the discussion about what the COLA projections would be would be would be in Bolton, 
I uh, think they stated that it was still in process. It's a work in process and seeing because all of our um, all of the um, contracts are up and have to be renegotiated and those contracts help to drive, I think, what the COLA will be for the town employees. So that's kind of there. What they what the Bolton representatives being all this I think all the selectmen were there. Um, was that in 2012 we had a zero percent uh, cola 2013 one and 20, 20 that's right. 13 one and 2014 uh, two percent so um, that's that's sort of the history of where the, the colas have been in the last three years La Lancaster said that all of their they, that all of their positions I think are um, negotiated through collective bargain bargaining when they're all ending this year so they'll be deciding what their cola cost of living adjustment mm -hmm. is. And Stowe says that they are, I mean, I guess they always have one year contracts and they're looking at a 2%. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that's yeah, what right. I'm, okay. And then they're school, not one year contracts, they're three year contracts. Are there three? But the actual wages gets open each year. It's oh. very, works very well. Okay. <laughs> Talk to Don. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the school district says that the, um, all, everything's up for negotiation this year. All the contracts are up, the teachers and the, and the non union employees. Um, Budget planning. Uh, Bob Bob uh, started talking about the Stowe has had had three large dollar items on their on their last town meeting. Maybe it was a special town meeting. New fire station for seven million. Library renovations four to four to five million. The senior center no, which would be at the Pompous Etiquette School, School. No, no money, and all were defeated. So they're going to be revisiting, and I think now they're going to be prioritizing. So they're probably looking on taking on some more debt. Kind of like where we were a couple of years ago. Um, Lancaster, the, the only thing that I heard him talk about was the community center rehab, which was 3.2 million, and I think that's coming on now for them. Um, Bolton, there's nothing, no, no huge uh, um, items in, 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 you know, being planned. Uh, funding for other post-employment benefits. That's my that I brought that up because that's sort of you know where I have a lot of interest. Like all three towns, well, all three towns, Bolton included, had stated that they have established a fund, and all of them said that they plan on putting some money into the fund this year. Uh, Lancaster, it sounded like they really wanted to fund the whole thing if they had to even borrow money to fund it. That they really wanted to have that the entire. Um, commitment funded. Uh, Bolton and Stowe are sort of on the, did I get that wrong? Same page with um, funding a portion. And um, the school district said that whatever they fund, this is to answer your question, whatever they fund um, will be passed on to the towns. But do they have an estimate of what the they, had, they did, and I don't remember. It's a big number, 20 million or something like that. It's a big number, maybe more. I, I thought ours was 20 million. Ours is 20 million. Uh, two million, yeah, two million, two, two million. Two million, two. Yeah, two million. So one hundred eighty-three thousand. Well, one hundred eighty-three thousand for, yeah, it's two million. I didn't bring it with me, but. Yeah. One hundred eighty-three thousand for how year. many years? Um, but that's current and future because you have that's to be funding. Thought, yes. No, I, yeah. thought, I thought our total obligation was up around twenty million. No, no. two. That's not that high. Well, we I think I it went up a little higher with the last valuation, but it's not more than four million. I can bring it. I can bring it next time. Yeah, we should. Get well, we're going to certainly discuss that. Um, but but the school districts is up around twenty. Million. I don't know. I to be honest, I think I, I didn't take it down. I think I asked the question, but. Um, okay. I, I, I what I really asked him is I said I wanted to see their financial statements, and they said, uh, Don has. Oh, I thought maybe they fell off the chair laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought they would too. I mean, you know, he's so big and I'm so short, and I'm going, you know, I'd really like to see your financial statements. I thought he was going to say, well, you should have one. <clears throat> okay, so um, that's my. Oh, okay. uh, next uh, Tri Town is uh, December 11th. Anybody have any questions? Because I. Uh, Linda Sante. December 11th. December. What did I say? September? No, November. November. You said December. Okay. She said December. My years. I heard December. <laughs> December 11th. Does years. anybody have any items that they would like? You don't have to state it now, but please let Linda know. Um, it's going to be hosted in Lancaster. Um, we ha um, have been looking, I'm going on the next item, which is discuss actual and budgeted revenue sources. 
which everybody should have got. Um, but yeah, those handouts here. Um, uh, it's the same thing you have here. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I, I did the same thing. David, larger. Um, so a request, you know, we, what we had asked for this year when we're looking at expenditures, and um, Stasha, feel free to can sit down and go over stuff. Okay. okay. Right, right. I'm going to listen very yeah. well right okay. now. <laughs> and then we can, you know, certainly talk. But um, we have from... Uh, the budgets, all of the budget uh, information that we're going to have um, to work with this year, three years actual um, uh, 2014 budget and uh, 2015 estimated. Um, and so we wanted to see the same thing from the revenue side. So the, the front page is, is a sort of a recap of what money, that's the unused tax levy, and could be added to free cash that we might have available. But keep in mind, under operating expenditures, it's just level funded from last year, and we all know that that number is going to change from the estimated for 2015. Um, it, whether it's COLA or whatever might happen. Hey, debt service is coming down. Yay! Debt service is coming down. So I just want to take so the revenue piece. One of the questions, one of the requests had been to take a look at revenue over the last three years, like we take a look at expenditures over the last three years. So if you turn to the second page, you'll have. Um, the revenue actual 2011, 12, and 13, the budget for 2014, and estimated 2015. And again, that estimated 2015, you know, it's just a, the, we don't have any budgets reflected in here yet. Um, Julie, did you get more than when we talked this morning? How many budgets do you have? <laughs> I, I got a few more, but they're not all. What, they're was, not the, all what was the date that we. Today, yeah, yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday, which is supposed to have one. Uh, slower than usual or about the same? Or? Probably about the same. Okay, good. So um, nothing's reflected here as far as the expenditures, but some question has, so the, the first section is the levy limit, and this is based on information. I just blew my nose. Yeah. Okay, because I am. You are I'm, harder to see, right? Yeah, yeah, right, I can't see those little numbers. So the basic story is we're going down by almost 300,000 because of new growth and overlay release at this point. Right, so the, uh, right. So the, so the overlay reserve is, is at 100,000 and um, it was, was 240. So we don't know, right? I mean, is that a number that's changing? That's, that's, that was a, that's, no, that's a number, number that they gave us yeah. when we met them. Oh, so that's a that's a, solid that's a fixed number. number. Okay. And the new growth, they gave us that too at 150. Right, 150. Last year it was 307. So that's another 150. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's the only numbers that have really significantly changed. You know, sometimes we look at and we um, question the estimated local receipts section where we tend to, um, that's on, it's like in the middle, um, whatever was budget, you know, that, that we don't increase that from year to year, though there has been an No, we pushed on it last year. We pushed on it last year, year but then it's, so it, it was the actual, back in 2013 was, I'll just look at motor vehicles, 20, 728,000, the uh, budget for this year is 710, and then of course the same, because we're, we're level funding. So I just sort of did this little thing, just to sort of maybe take, you know, not have, I mean, this is something we can think about. I'm not taking it off the table. But if we went back and sort of um, increased the estimated local receipts by bringing it up to 2013, just playing, you know, like we were to say to Julie, Julie, why are you keeping it at 710 when in 2013 we had $728,000? And we came up with $60,000. It's, it's not a lot. Yeah. It's so not I, a lot to come in extra above 60. But if you sure. come in no, lower, I'm, below I'm 60. On your side. Okay. okay. So I'm just saying, I don't think that it's, well, and if I, we should spend a, I, let me just finish. I don't think we should spend a heck of a lot of time agonizing over these. These You can keep it in mind. But what you, it's the, I'm, I'm liberal in so many ways, but financially can be very conservative. That You know, this, this isn't a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. if you don't need it, you, you have you have a you have a problem. Well, that's where I'm at. Okay, you may uh, disagree. I disagree. We we've tried to get reasonable revenue numbers for a while. I understand that we build in some conservatism. Last year we pushed a little bit. Julie, remember on excise 
uh, taxes, especially for motor vehicles. <laughs> and we came up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to meet that number this year. And again, my... Okay, so, but here's the thing. we got to remember, Terry, for you to say that, I get I get 60 grand is not going to move the needle. But as we talk about free cash and why we scratch our heads every year to say, geez, we wanted free cash to be 250 and it's a million two, 60,000 of that is because well, of yes. not a bad thing. There's yeah, and, but so much of that had to do with, with but, the timing but, differences and stuff. I mean, really. But no, 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 every come, little come, bit. come the edge of the I market, agree. come the end of the, first off, I'm still working toward the day where we can do the operating budget without using free cash. Never mind the warrant articles, and, but, but the basic budget without using free cash. And if we're not able to do that because we're being too conservative on the income side, I think that bears more attention. The second thing is that even despite that, every time we get to the March time frame before the warrant closes, we are scrounging for five and ten and fifteen thousand dollars to do this gap or the other thing uh, in the budget. And now's the time to have the discussion about whether or not the income side, aside from taxes, is correct in order to address those those two issues. And, and I'm fine with having, hey, whatever we decide, is it a rolling three-year average? Um, you know, I'm not saying, since, you know, listen, excise ta taxes is, if, if, if it's a good economy here, people are going to go out and buy new cars. I bought a new car this year for my, or we bought a new car this year for my wife, right? Um, the cars come in cycles for people, so using the last known year is not probably the way to do it either. So if we come up with, a, but I think setting 710, which you know when we when we historically had looked into some of the preliminary numbers, it was just a, it was a good estimate, but there was no, it wasn't like a three-year trailing average. It wasn't an average of the last two years. I think I'd be more comfortable if we got to a standard of how we estimate. Some of these are very hard numbers that I'm perfectly comfortable with. Some of them are like excise taxes and other local oh, yeah, some cities of them are, are, yeah. are really estimates. And what's the best way to estimate is you look at as much historical perspective as you have. I'm not sure we always did that. I'd be perfectly fine if we voted to say on all these type of items, it's a three year average and we look at it for reasonability from time to time. Do you know what I mean? I think David has a question. Yes, David, sorry. I don't think it would be so bad if one year we came up short on the revenue estimate. Um, yes, it is so bad. Why? Why? Because you have a revenue deficit which is against the law and you have to raise that. So we it's have not to, a company. We you have can't to, go in the red. You have to raise it at the next town meeting. No, you'd have to raise it on your recap, which means your tax rate is going to go even higher. But it, you wouldn't have raised your tax rate in the first place. You can't have a revenue deficit. You need to, you need to have to stop your expenses at the end of the year. You'd have to have everybody stop spending. You'd have to lay off people. You would not be able to pay your bills. You can't go in the red. This is not a company. But so how does it work when we when we leave exit we leave levy capacity on the table every year though because we have the taxing ability to cover the shortfall no, within don't. two and a half. But you've already set so, your tax rate. You've already right. said this is what you're going to collect. You can't go back and collect that again. Right. You don't know you have a deficit until you literally run out of cash. Right. Yeah. Understood. But don't we? But that's why we have set a minimum free cash target that we can. Well, we do that for a lot of reasons. No, I understand. And I'm not, not, I'm not, listen, I'm not being as aggressive as David on advocating that it's, I don't want to ever be short, the, but I don't, I don't want to ever be $100,000 off. No, the flip side of that, though, you know, is if, 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 you, if, you, if we foresee a revenue shortfall, we should be able to then cut expenses. Really? But Julie said you have to cut them in the fiscal year that yes. you're in. I understand. you got to put a spending freeze. Nobody wants to do that. That's... Yeah. That's uh, guerrilla warfare. I, I I disagree. I think people would want to do that. To, to oh, we would have to do that, but yeah. nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to get yeah. ourselves into that. Be too aggressive that we put ourselves in that situation on purpose. You'd be talking what fifty thousand dollar miss 
you can cut expenditures by fifty thousand dollars to get through the end of the year. No, no, I'm not saying but, that. But, I if that the the, yeah. but if you're doing that at the very end, but if you're doing that at the very end of the year, you're affecting people. You know, you're really no, no, affecting no, no, people's no. lives. No, we're not because yeah. yes, because you are. If you're if you're the person that has to be laid off because you have to meet that target, wait a minute, wait or if you're wait the person, let me just finish. So if you're the person that has the services that have to be cut, or if you're the department that has to cut certain services in order to meet that fifty thousand dollars. That number is not big, but if you're that person or if you're that department, it's very meaningful. Then where does the four hundred thousand dollars in free cash coming back from the departments come from? We're talking about a fifty thousand dollar overrun, and yet we we can anticipate between three and four hundred dollars of underspending every year. And we have to be thankful, I think, in a way, that the departments are sending back that money because if we are cut, if we cut them so tight that they can't send back anything. Then they're going to spend all of it. But that's See, but right now we have the departments that are looking and saying, "Okay, we're not using it," and we have to question no, no, why no. it's not. It, but they're not no, spending. That, it. I understand, but so the difference. It, listen, there's a fine line here. It's, it shouldn't be three, four hundred thousand, and it shouldn't be razor thin either. It's somewhere in the middle of, of where we are now. And to Bob's point, even even if we if we think a win is a hundred and fifty of give backs every year. We still have enough to cover a small revenue deficit if we if we had to, and we probably wouldn't even need to do anything. We just need to let the budget run its normal course. But I just want to say I'm not our, I'm not advocating for levering the the holy hell out of these numbers, right? I I just want some I want a better a better way to estimate than just 710 grand, which which had no to me last year or the year whatever it was before we made it 710. It had no, well, it it had no real basis for me. Yeah, well, it was seven. You know, I, 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 I mean, I'm thinking of something like five percent below the three-year average, or something like that. Yeah, you know, just some standard that we set. And I'll go, I'll go yeah, run some like numbers that. and distribute them. So that's on what vehicles take those three years in average. Right. Yeah, Terry, I'll, I'll go look at and run some numbers and, and look at something like. The three-year average less five percent. Okay, but and I, work with Julia. I just talked to Julia yeah, about it, saying that you're getting the right numbers. Because, and I think yeah. we come back in January at that first meeting and That's we fine. talk about it. But let's but, uh, let me just say for the record, this isn't a pat on on our backs. But Thank what you. I would say is, we levered these numbers more than historically normal last year. Last year, and what I'm hearing is is that we're not. I mean, we're only halfway through the year here, but we're not. Julie would have told us by now. You don't know right now, and I can tell you many reasons why. One, the motor vehicle doesn't come in until March. So you're not going to know until then whether you're even close to that number. Second of all, I don't get the receipts from the treasurer till at least the following month, if not later. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to know where you are. Mm -hmm. the end of the year, I'm not going to know whether or not you paid that revenue. Vehicle. I want to know beforehand that you paid your revenue oh, no, let's, estimates let's by the... But she wanted you to speak. No, I just yeah, don't no, no. yell, though. What's She's not yelling. Okay, She's being very yelling. emphatic. Yeah. And you... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to point out something. Can I just point out something? So, just the motor vehicle, the three-year average, not a rolling average, I understand all this stuff, is $707,000. No, it's around seven thousand. Yep. Yeah. So I think I think it's good to go through the exercise. I don't know if we want. I, I don't know if the committee will have to decide if we want to be very specific that we do certain things based on you know this is the way it has to be. But I really want to do it with um, Julie's total input. So Bob, that sounds like good. If you'll work with sure. you on, on some of these things, these items, and see what we can. I don't, I'm not saying that sixty thousand dollars is nothing. Uh, it might even be a little bit more than that. But it's it's also. You know, there's, there's some comfort to be had. But let's also say too, Julie's point is a good one on motor vehicles not coming until March. However, that's the that's for the motor vehicles that people currently own. No, that's for all of them. Well, I beg to differ. I just bought a brand new car and I just made a check out for eight hundred dollars to the to the uh, to the town. So, right, that was for last year. No, well, it was I just bought the car in August, in August though. So I, I don't. It, it, the bill came out right away after I registered the car. And that was for a new purchase. Right, it's on a calendar year. So that was for that's for thirteen, which normally people pay in March. You're yeah. paying now because you didn't have the car then. I understand, but I already paid in March too. It's so new cars. So file for abatement because they have yeah. the money. I will. Yeah. Uh, 
David. Where's that in the budget? I, I, don't, I think the three-year rolling average is too conservative. Car sales are going gangbusters. We should be projecting a record. If, if our highest was 727, we should be projecting something higher than 727. But that's, that's for right now, Dave. I mean, I, I... Well, this is for one this year. This is not a... Yeah, yes. and we should you go the other way. You don't project things that you want to meet. I think we should put it we should a realistic... Project down. I think some consistency should be put into these numbers to smooth them out. Also, what would be great is as we go through these, if there's hard and fast, great. If there's ones that we're just talking about that are, are highly variable, yeah, let's try and f come up with a definition, an average to smooth it out. Better yet, let's also write it down so as oh, yeah, this absolutely. committee changes, yeah. there might be some continuity from committee year good. to year. Um, but no, no, I think if we can build good. more you know, of a predictive analytical model into this whole entire thing, it's going to be a good thing. Yes. Okay, so where we're at right now is recognizing that there are potentially some, some um, uh, receipts, the revenues that we can look at and, and maybe better fine tune. And Bob is going to work with uh, Julie on coming up with some ideas on that and, and for our meeting in January, whatever it is. And that's the meeting in which we talk about revenue like we talk about expense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's important too, right? We have okay, we don't we don't have it really in the budget, but I mean in the agenda, but we have you know, go ahead, we're through at eight forty five, we can go through till it can. Yeah, so. but but all right, so but if we don't have it in the agenda, we probably should. I mean, I one will of the put things it in. Bob yeah. and I have tried to talk about was just as important as meeting fourteen straight weeks to talk about expenses, you know, we should at least be able that, to have that's why, one yeah, couple and, hours to revenue. And really to be honest, that's why we've done, yeah. done this. And we're bringing it okay. at this point so we can all think about it and come up with some ideas. So that when we when we meet January fourth, whatever date it is, seventh, uh, that um, you know this is something that we can give some thought to. And um, so revenue on the seventh. Yeah. We spend most of our time talking about expenses, but yep. but there is some benefit to be. Okay. Um, I had down that we're going to re review available funds positions. There's no sense in doing that. Status of the budget. We just heard from Julie that there's a lot of budget still to come in. The uh, night, by the 19th, we do, should be no, getting I, some... I do have one question on available funds. Yes. On um, other available funds where... You, you, gave me a, you gave me the answer to my email that I had to read into it. Okay, um, we'll bring everybody else up to date. On um, other available funds, on the money that's been borrowed, which is on this page, where it says available, has that formally been released by whatever department is responsible for? It? Everything but the one with the question mark. Okay. Yes. Okay. Where's the question mark, Julie? Uh, library. Fund 3001. Okay. So this money, what we're, what we're finding here is that this money that says available, we've taxed for it, we've appropriated it, it's yes. unspent. We borrowed for it. We borrowed for it, I'm sorry. We've taxed to pay the interest on it, and anyway. Mm -hmm. But we can reuse this money for a like thing, though. for a similar, for another borrowed article. Well, I thought it had to be within the. It had to be something genre. that can be borrowed for the same period of time. Right, right, right. So are these the items that are marked as available, available. Oh, I see, and then the available question mark. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so what did you say they had to be used for again? Can you just? Uh, they, this is borrowed money, so yes. it has fallen under the borrowed guidelines, so it has to fall under those same guidelines as this original money that was borrowed. So for example, if something for, is for five-year borrow versus a 15-year borrow, is that the deal? Mm -hmm. So do we know which one, do we have, uh, I'm assuming you, you know the 84000 is going to be for X number of years? And yep, that's less than 15, that's like a five. So if it's a five, can you you can't apply it to a ten you can do and just exhaust it? Yeah, you can't do lower, mm -hmm. right? Got it. But you could exhaust it in a ten year borrowing and just Yeah, if you, you wanted know. I don't even know what you would do with the ten year. But no, I'm just you don't have a project out there for ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, but not that we're advocating one either. No. Hey, but let's <laughs> you wanted to do town hall over and use some of these funds? Go for it. But this is a real good example of this is where we've we've started to look at this with Julie's help 
over the past couple of years that we've mined a little bit of gold out of some mm -hmm. of this stuff. Yeah, the money's out there. Yeah. Can we use it? You know, if we find a way of using it. I, I still want to know if they can paint the library with that money. But anyway. Yes, and, and we can't pay it down, Julie, no. because it's non probable debt, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the 216000 or whatever it was that we didn't raise to the levy limit when we mm -hmm. set the tax rate, how does that figure into this um, estimated two, two 2015 um, levy limit. Okay, I don't understand the question. Okay, um, the, the fact that we went it's under gone. the levy limit doesn't doesn't matter. We don't lose that capacity okay. in terms of capacity. So, so in the following year. if if we again did 216, we would raise uh, 17 200 and right. whatever rather mm -hmm. than yeah. Right. And and that's that's sort of where. We need to be a little bit more sophisticated with what our free cash target is in the budget because we always assume in our when we set our budget we feel good about our surplus position as we go through the process it's pretending that we tax to the max mm -hmm. when we know that we haven't we but we have also need to remember years. not to tax to the max next year if we want tax relief right, right. Right. right, but so I'm just saying we got to think about that 200. The, our our average has been to not raise 200, 250. It almost might make sense to just wean ourselves off of that, even to, even to start the budget process, to 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 you know, make free cash 500 instead of 250. Make the free cash target 500 instead if, of 250. If, if we were able to fund the operating budget uh, without free cash, I'd agree with that. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean that's a goal, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying that's another thing that we get caught up with is we pretend we have all this money and then we advocate in November not to tax 250 grand when we set the budget with 250 grand more of revenue, right? I just don't want to forget that. Yeah. We do fund the operating budget without free cash, we just don't know it. Yeah, because we have the excess. Because we wind up having yeah, the yeah, excess. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the, right. the excess more than covers. More than covers whatever but we But just be aware, what we're cash. doing a lot with that excess now has been to, um, yeah, to pay for the, the snow and ice. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. that's true. Yeah, no, but I would, I would just feel better doing it from the get-go. Oh, I'm, I'm not averse to that. Yeah. Do so you prefer to spend money that you have as opposed to money you think you might have? No, I agree with that. Julie, when we, the, the, the second we approve something, not the second, but Donna goes and, and, and borrows for it right away. Does she? Yeah. No. So she, does she wait or she, she blankets them all together and, and Yes, and for the smaller them. projects, the yeah. ones that, you know, that we're talking about here, a lot of them, she waits to the end. We have uh, a bond anticipation note that we do, a state house yeah, note. Okay. Right, the state house note that she does in June. So. so like just take the whole building we appropriated 90 grand okay at town meeting when Harold's ready to do it you didn't, didn't borrow for that oh, that's right so yeah, yeah I can't hey, but then yeah, say we 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 just for example yeah. purpose so hypothetically say we did hypothetically we borrowed for it yes would Donna wait until Harold was ready to, to work she would actually probably she... wait until June okay. before the end of the year and would she borrow the whole 90 grand or would she wait at that time to borrow if there was a better, a lower number or would she borrow the 90? She'd do the 90. And she'd see, do the 90 because that was what was approved at town meeting. Yeah. And then that's and that, happens, and that, then that ends up, up over residual. here. I'm yeah. just wondering if there's a way to, hopefully we don't have to borrow for anything, but if we do, I was wondering if there was a way to eliminate the cleanup that's often necessary here by because borrowing exactly what we need as opposed to the round number that we estimate on the warrant. Yeah. Well, depending upon timing and stuff, you sh you can't have a deficit, or you, you can have the deficit at the end of the year, but it's going to hit your free cash, going to hit for it. So it's I mean, a to total timing thing. It's a total yeah. timing thing again. And if you didn't go out and borrow for all of it, you'd still it'd be a less clean up, but you would have to go to town meeting and rescind the authorization mm -hmm. for that portion. Got it. Yeah. We'd have to clean it up. Oh, that's true. And I'd rather not. I mean, that's more complicated. Not really, actually. The no. thing is a lot easier than trying to find another project. To apply it for a Oh, like, yeah, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because then all these articles. Because it's so restrictive big. what we can do with that mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because remember that article that was big where we were like. Yeah. Taking from here and there. X, X, yeah. X from here, yeah. here, and here. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, good. So we will add that to the agenda in January. Um, I just want to say, make a statement about advisory liaisons. There was some confusion as, as to its, with the, being, you know, with all these advisory li li liaison positions that you all have volunteered for requires that you spend an inordinate amount of time. And my answer to that is, I don't think it should. You're not required to go to meetings that that uh, the departments have unless you want to. Um, and you're, you know, it can be what you want it to be. I'll give an example. If Randy wants to give an example, that's fine. I, I've been working as a liaison with the Council on Aging. So they had um, a meeting, um, actually two meetings, in order for them to work on their budget. And I attended both of those meetings and gave some input on how they could possibly structure it so that it might be um, more interesting to the advisory committee when they come in and present it. Yep. Um, so that was a commitment I was willing to make. I didn't have to go, but I thought it was important. And they 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 liked that. Um, also, I know there are some other departments, uh, like tomorrow I'm going to walk with the conservation through the Bow, um, Bower Springs. Bower Springs. We'll say Bower. To look at the honeysuckle? Yes, I'm going to look at the honeysuckle with my dog and Carol. Um, so you can do what you want with that, but um, you know, as long as you're reaching out and, and making yeah. Making requests. Randy, do you want to say anything about this? Yeah, no, I had a wonderful, uh, I, I met with the library trustees uh, uh, two weeks ago on a Tuesday night where we didn't have an advisory meeting um, to talk about, they're the first ones in uh, next year to talk about their budget. And they, they had a couple of needs that were unanticipated and we had a very productive couple hour meeting. Uh, where we talked about some strategy as to how to pay for some of the things and they reviewed their budget at a preliminary level with me with the understanding that I was only one out of six and that they would still obviously be coming to the whole committee. Uh, I thought it was a really good use of the time, although I would say that being the liaison for the library, I will not regularly attend trustee meetings. There's really no need to unless, unless, it, unless they, they ask me that, that it would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's sort of how I view a, a sort of a perfect, and, and your example is a perfect use of the liaison role. It gives, if a department particularly wants to do a dry run and you play devil's advocate with them and you get, you know, you can accommodate that in your schedule, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a productive use of time. But it shouldn't require a lot of your time. And if no. you find that it did, and I know that might have come up, do you have a question? Um, I was just wondering, the gentleman who left this position here that I'm now filling, um, did he have liaisonships that I should be picking up? No, probably there weren't any liaisons then. We, it's something that we always have liaisons with the large departments like uh, DPW and police. And this year I kind of felt that it would be nice to reach out to the smaller departments that are often very fearful about coming before us and, okay. and you know, it's, it's, it can you. be daunting. Yeah. So we've been, and library's not small, but um, uh, some of the others a tree warden, and I don't know. And I, I called um, all of mine, and they were appreciative. Some people said, no, I don't really need it. And others have said, yeah, you know, okay. I'd like to. So that's, a, um, there are no, um, and I wouldn't do that to you. I'm meeting with Gary Perwak, who runs the IT here in town. He's got his own separate budget. Uh, Thursday at 3. No. Uh, if you want to sit in on that, we can okay. just see what's going on. I don't know. I don't know how convenient that, that is for your schedule. I, I here, let's get off the bus at three forty-two. <laughs> I can be no, here yeah. until three forty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can walk across the street and get there, right? Yeah. No. But let me get back to you on that. Yeah. 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 Um, Something else you should do is give Linda your email address and okay. telephone number. I was going to dish it at the end of this meeting, actually. <laughs> just do it with Linda and she'll distribute okay. it to us. Fair good. Thank See, you. we can't, you cannot contact all of us anyway. Just, just say. Oh, okay. You can't send an email. I, I need to learn the rules. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And you'll be okay. taking a, 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 a ethics exam. Yes. Just okay. Ask Pam Powell to set you up for that. Okay. Pam for the ethics. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got to take an online course. And just simple, the email. two second overview on open meeting stuff is we are a public, we're a committee that needs to meet in public. Got it. Uh, with the door open, for, on TV uh, is not required, although we with happen to be on TV all the time. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and when we communicate, we get our an email from Linda that usually tells us what our schedule is, what our uh, uh, it itinerary is for the, our you know upcoming meetings and we were not allowed to communicate um, between each other okay. if it represents a quorum 
So Terry and I can talk. Oh, I can talk to you. I can talk to Bob. Matter of fact, Bob, Terry, and I can meet because yes. we're only three. So if you send an email, you can yeah. send it to three people, including yourself. No. You no. plus two. You, you plus right, two. two. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. four you can't send it to four. Right. Four would six. be deliberating yeah. outside yeah. of the public. So meeting. you could send an email to these two people. You yeah. can send it another email no, with exactly that. the same thing yeah. to the other two, and it's just, that's yeah, all. Yeah. No, it's great. It's good. But you're not sure if exactly the same thing to four people is what? No, no, not to four. No, no, four. no, no, but Bob was saying. Include. Well, he's saying you can send an email to two people and then send the exact same thing oh, to both. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't. Do that? I, don't I, don't, I don't think so. I actually don't, don't know. Because I think. Yeah. I mean, if I get up, at a, if, I, if I have a phone call with you two, I mean, I can't have the same phone call with <laughs> four other people. I think you can. Or five other people? Maybe maybe we'll find out. We'll, we'll, let's let's find out. I'll take my ethics exam and get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you another example. If we all happen to go to the dump together at six o'clock at six thirty on Saturday morning, we, won't find know, you know, so that's okay. we can't talk to each other. Got it. Yeah, that's all right. Even over the plastic. That's recycling. probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want to be there that long anyway. But you so then when we if we have to go um, as a group to you'll, you'll see sometimes we'll be posted for selectment. Sometimes we'll have to, we'll have to go to selectment and, and if there's a chance that we're gonna all show up, they'll post us as, as having a meeting. Oh interesting. So okay. all, it has to do. Could that happen at like a tri town meeting as well? Yes. yes. Okay. We could, but don't worry about it. I don't think anybody's going besides me. So, so those are posted anyway. So long yeah, they are posted. That's right. Posted, we're okay. Yeah. But logistically, I could, you know, who's going to Tri Town and, you know, yeah, sure. make sure that I'm not showing up and making corn. Linda is always a good person to talk to. Great. She's a. No, Tri Towns you can go to because they're posted to serve. Uh, uh, okay. All, all yeah. hands on oh, deck. Yeah. 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 Got it. So any other, um, as far I, I had upcoming meeting schedules. So Linda was nice enough to put in what we're doing in January. We won't be getting together together again until January. So everybody have a Happy holiday season, be safe, and um, uh, we will be getting budgets around the 19th. I, I assume they will, I don't know if they're sent, do you send them out to us or do you send them to Linda and then she sends them out? How's it happened in the past? Yeah, I think Linda sends them out. Okay. Julie, are you, um, are you, uh, how do I say this? Uh, do you spot check the budgets that you get for like obvious? Do, do you do any work when you get? Uh, <laughs> that's why I, I didn't want to sound like that. Do you? What are you doing do you, in that room? When you Last get year, a, I actually took the time to meet with majority. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's experiments. exactly what I was getting to. Like, you don't just take it and put it in, right? You 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 have the expertise where you can look at it and and find an issue that you know just you know how we've been over the years. You, you it can just doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's exactly right. I'm sorry that it took me a long time to answer <laughs> ask that question. Some of that stuff, but I mean, they'll yeah. usually put it in their description and I don't go and question them because that's their, your job to do yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but if they're, like, I remember an example where they were, somebody was calculating, you know, they were putting colas in, you know, oh, yeah. and, 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 and like you would catch that kind of stuff, right? Or, or no? We should, especially yeah. the smaller ones. Uh, the bigger ones are a little harder because they yeah. tend to blend it and... Yeah, I mean, it's not like, I don't want to give you, I don't want to give you license, but I think it, that first point of contact, which you serve, I think is, you you could identify a lot of things, especially with some of the problematic departments. I try, but there's also yeah. a very small time frame there that I have to mm -hmm. do that, mm -hmm. especially since people do not get them in on time. Yeah. I only work three days a week, and I'm here at 939. Yeah. I'm going to get you out in the next two minutes, but just a couple of things <laughs> I wanted to bring up is... Please take a look at those expenditure ledgers that, that uh, Julie sends out. I, I find them really informative. You're just looking, you know, it's a, it even be cursory. So I don't know, we're in our fifth month or what fourth month? I don't know. Do the math. So if it's, it was easy that the th I could do a third, you know. So if you see that if, if departments are spending about a third, that if they're spending something weird and you don't understand it, you know, um, you know, give Julie a call or, you know, uh, that's what I do. So just take a look, and she sends those out every month. Yeah, there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, I did ask Julie, um, you know, if we were to have, and this isn't to say that we are endorsing any kind of cola, but for every 1% of cola uh, on non-union uh, employees, it's about $15,000, just to keep that in mind. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Is it my also understanding that all the contracts are being negotiated now, Julie? All the other ones? All the contracts are going to be up by the end of yeah. 14, but I wouldn't say they're in negotiations yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. So by the end of 14, so so basically said another way, what we've tried to do with the COLA is make it make a parity between union and non-union, but we're going to have a difficult time doing that. It's a, it's 15, a no contract. There's no contract to, to well, be this, able to so This is a conversation we this, need to have. Make sure we have Don well, with Don because well, Don, Don said he's going to give us a number. Yeah. Okay. Don said he will give us a plug number. That's right. We'll to account for that. Okay. Well, I mean, let's hope we're. Um, and this is where, as I said earlier, that still actually comes in handy because the town administrator will say everybody is getting the same cola. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what gets reopened yeah. every year. Yeah. Well, we've, we've done that though uh, over the past bunch of years, haven't we? I don't think that's ever been a. No. That's not a strict policy. Oh, it's not a policy, no. but we've done it. We've tried to make it that way, but a few years ago, the DPW had a two percent increase when everybody got zero. zero because it was yeah. built into their contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's unfortunate. And just, do you, um, you want to readdress the, the questions you had between fun. Cola and? <laughs> remember, we were going to write a letter. Steps. Did you? We did write a letter. Okay, and I don't know what the result of that letter was. Well, I asked whether or not we should, well, I asked, well, we sent it to the Board of Selectmen. I think we gave it to Linda and, or Don, one of the two of them, and they were supposed to present it to the Board of Selectmen. I asked Don whether or not I should, I should present it or someone from this committee should present it to the Board of Selectmen, and he said that wasn't necessary. Do you want to find out where that is at before Jane? That's, that's, that's um, if they presented it? Did, I sure. haven't seen it. But David, okay. David was on the board when we Oh, that. David. Yeah. Sorry, well, David. It, it was presented, and my memory is that the way we were doing it was the right way. That, that's how it's done. I think you felt the... Cola should come and then the steps should come. No, no, my, no, no, no. The letter no, no, was. That we did do that, but this is the second letter. Right, right. Yeah, I think no. he was gone by the time. Yeah, I, I don't think you were on. I think we only did this last year. After right. after year. Right. Right. The premise was is that if we were to we, we have to for parity, we have to do colas on top of steps in the exact same year because that's the way the union contracts do it, and we, we said. In order to reverse this cycle, is when union contracts are negotiated, it's either COLA or STEP for the upcoming for the upcoming, upcoming ones, one. and that way we can then eliminate this, if not double, the, whatever the right the mm. word for it is, extra with, with, with everyone else. Yeah. Right. But union had to start first, and so we sent a letter recommending that in That's future right. union negotiations, and then the COLAs were added, and then we gave the STEP, and then right? figured yes. out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't no, no, the step right? gets added, and then you figure out the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. So our point was, you know, if you've got three contracts, one of them can be step and two of them can be cola. We're not telling you that they all have to be steps or all have to be cola, just that what no contract has both of them in it. Right. right. And what we were struggling with, we were giving people cola on money that they had never gotten before. Right. Because they were just getting a step, and we were doing cola on top of their old salary, their brand new step. Exactly. And, and, and I think cold. the answer was that that's the way it's done. But it's the way it's done. It's so you you want to have the step? You want the cola done first and then the step? No, you no, either cola. do colas or steps. The contracts have but only two different things. one or the other. Yes. A step is more like a merit rate. Yeah, I I, say. I think that's pretty hopeless. But yeah, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, but they just they don't go by merit. Have time. Right. 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 You're so long. You're better at your job. You should know it more. You get a step. But, but, you, get a step. but, 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 but you get a step every Fine. year. Yeah, you get it no matter. Well, you're you're not always. Not. There's a period. There's people that are maxed out that don't get steps. Well, okay. Which a lot of people here well, don't. Okay. Well, okay. If you're maxed out and you're at the top of the step, then I can see giving a cola. But I can't see giving a cola and a step. What's merit increase? No, no. very good. Because steps are yeah. they're just given. They're just they're, given. They're they're just given. You, don't you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't, you don't, don't have to meet any criteria. Right. You just have to be here. You just got to be here. Show up for work. Right. <laughs> but what Julie's saying, and I think we asked at the time, was that's what other municipalities do as well. But then I remember that there was some outliers, but not the majority. Right. I can't think of a town. I think. Don there, there were there were some towns that don't do it, but they were a distinct minority. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, um, everybody have a good holiday season. Do we have a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.